Chapter 31 Central Island, 4, you are listening at novelfull.audio. The clan lords cautiously but quickly set up an arrangement to surround the demon. But their opinions were split. Some of them thought, that that if we get it, it's good, the mini dot crystal was good whether you used it or collected it. There were quite a few nice items that could be bought with just two or three of them. It created an aura around the person holding the flag which increased the speed of regeneration as well strength and stamina by 5%. In the situation where the artifacts and runes didn't have much difference between people, the artifacts that could be gained from the mini dot crystals showed a clear difference from other artifacts. An object that could create differences between lords. And five people per one mini dot crystal. This was a significant number even to a lord. If 100 were to be released and the clans were to distribute them, it'll still be 8 per clan. It meant that during a serious emergency, they could move with enough forces to act as a basis for a new start. And there were many other uses for it as well. But some clan lords thought as such. Damn. They can't be spread around. The people moving with the mini dot crystal will be happy. But then what would happen to the ones below? And the clans weren't the only ones here, there was no way for them to monopolize them. They couldn't make every one of their clansmen escape no matter how many they collected. In that case, it's better to defend instead. The fairy wanted them to suffer but it did not want them to all die. This was probably set up so they could survive if they tried hard. They had to decrease the number of people ascending prematurely as much as possible. They needed to turn them into artifacts as soon as they got hold of them so they could get rid of other thoughts. The two types' opinion were different but the conclusion was the same. I'll obtain it no matter what. The twelve clan lords made a slightly anxious expression as they set up the formation. If the clansmen thought as much, the non-dot clansmen's thoughts were a bit different. Fuckers. They just keep trying to suppress us. Do you think we don't know what you guys are thinking? Hajin grinded his teeth. The clansmen and non-dot clansmen got treated equally and received equal distribution if one were to look from the outside. But this was only due to the fact that the situation around these few days was quite stable. They could feel it when they looked at the hunts of the clansmen. As soon as you receive that weird-looking symbol, you start caring for each other. On the other hand, the clansmen stayed together with them because they thought that the non-dot clansmen needed help seeing how they were doing but the way they treated them was almost like they were treating potential criminals. They didn't allow any form of communication between non-dot clansmen under different clans and they purposely separated hunting grounds between them to stop any form of meetings from happening. In such a situation, who between their 90 family members and possible 70 enemies would be thrown off first in a dangerous situation. Even if their battle strength were similar, the non-dot clansmen would be picked off one by one. And no matter how one thought about it, this world didn't seem like the difficulty was set such that it was okay for them to just defend decently. Look at that demon at this moment. There was no way that that thing would be weak and plenty of them would die from now on. So they had a lot of opportunities during the next month. So they had to take care of their own lives. But that IT would still be hard right. At this moment a lot of people, including themselves, had already gotten close to the demon. Since there wasn't anybody who wanted to charge towards the demon they just saw. And the people behind them were more of a problem than the demons. There probably aren't many who aren't aiming for that crystal. But they were only taking glances, nobody was able to charge at it. Logically, they knew that the chances that a crystal drops to them was incredibly low. There's even a chance they would get stabbed in the back even if they managed to almost kill the demon. Since even he would do such a thing if he could get the crystal by killing that guy. Thought if somebody was fighting it already there might be a chance for me. At that moment something happened. Kududuk something jumped out from the center of the defense formation. The existence which was charging towards the demon at an incredible speed shouted loudly. Get back as much as possible. That that guy is. 
Hajin's eyes shone as he looked at Hansu who was charging at the demon whilst shouting so loudly to the point where it resonated throughout the whole battlefield. Get back. This guy extremely dangerous. Yeah. Just look like that. Hansu looked at the lords who were also looking at him from around the battlefield and then dashed out quickly. I'll get it. The medium dot-sized greatsword in Hansu's hands sliced the air as it made a heavy noise. Kawaiing. The demon, which had been standing still, made a beastly noise as it intercepted Hansu by swinging its fist. Kidk. Hansu's greatsword sliced the skin but could not make a deep injury. And if that wasn't enough, the area that had been injured was healing rapidly. As I expected. Even when it's a weaker version. Demons. Clansmen of evil. Their appearances were similar to humans. If you discard the fact that they were 4M tall and had horns growing out of them. But this guy was an entirely different species from humans. I can't let down my guard even for a moment in order to kill this guy. It was rather okay until now. The cloud snack gained as the hidden piece had been thrown out after being used out cleanly. One had been left over since his runes had been all changed to colorless but he had smoked it deliciously as well so it had been taken care of cleanly. He had increased his defense and resistance with Nirmaha's ring and the rune eater snake. Now there wasn't going to be a situation where he would die accidentally from a skill. But this still wasn't enough. Attack power is lacking. Showing off his attack power against humans who had low resistances and who couldn't really take hits well as a race was merely a childish act. Most humans here were close to being superhuman but their ability to take hits and their defenses were the same as normal humans a situation where they would die if they got stabbed in their vital parts. On the other hand, the things he needed to slice apart in order for him to get to the demon lord's castle were demons. Even if they were weaker versions. Defense and resistances aside, their ability to take hits were on a different dimension because they're from a different race. These guys even had two hearts so they would continue to fight even if you stabbed one of the hearts. I need to fight it for around half a day just like the carnivorous beast. Rephrase. In order to beat it using the decent weapon he was holding that could be picked up in the dungeon, he was holding, he basically needed to wrestle it. That was why he needed to raise his attack power. Using the crystals he would get from killing the thing in front of his eyes. Runes will increase steadily as he hunts but the thing that dictated the attack power were artifacts. Who Hansu ruthlessly charged at the demon while swinging the medium-sized greatsword in his hands. All of Hansu's senses were focused on the demon. And the demon's movements started to form a three. Dimensional image in Hansu's head. And soon Hansu and the demon started to fight whilst creating noises like the storm. But just a short moment after he started to fight, a movement that he expected but didn't wish for, happened outside of Hansu's senses. TSK, Hansu slightly frowned. Hajin mumbled as he slowly approached Hansu. Though it's strong. The demon's physical ability was not something he could go up against. Since Hansu, who was going against it, looked like a monster. But aiming for the crystal wasn't something that one needed to be strong for. Looking at the situation. Don't go too close. It wasn't the time to drop his guards yet. Since it would be dangerous if that thing decided to go for the weaker ones first. But then there won't be space for him to interfere if the demon died, or was about to die, if he was too far away. A few people who had similar thoughts as Hajin started to close in the formation that surrounded the demon slowly. Which meant that they would look for chances whilst Hansu was fighting. Who? Hansu mumbled inwardly. Their thoughts weren't wrong. Since there was definitely a chance that they could go for I.T but how could the demon's physical abilities be all it has? There was another frightening thing about demons other than their physical abilities that was on a different dimension compared to those of humans. The problem was that there was no way for him to know what this racial skill was. Basically, it was random. Because of this, even Hansu wouldn't have had thoughts of attacking it without his resistances and Nirmaha's ring. It seems like it's not using it yet. 
It's definitely an area of effect attack, if it was a single target skill then it would have already used it. Han Su, who had been pondering for a moment, made a cold expression. Well. Their purpose is clear. It wasn't bad to increase the level of alert on others by killing a few of them. No, it was better to clean off people like these by borrowing the demon's hands. Since he wouldn't have any surplus power to escape from fighting the demon. Even before Hansu's thoughts could end, the body of the demon, which was standing still until now, started to heat up. It started to prepare this skill because the number of people around it had gotten sufficient. Hook. And soon the surrounding air started burning, then it became a ring as it exploded outwards from the demon. The black flame, which had spread out in a reddish-blackish manner, radiating outwards as it scorched the air. Han Su, after staring at the black flame for a while, applied Nirmaha's power, power destruction, onto the sword he gained in the underground, and then swung. Hong. The Nirmaha had split the black flame just like that. As I expected. It isn't something to laugh at but Nirmaha's power was not something that one could use for free. Han Su frowned as he felt the mana drain out from his body. If his magic, which increased the might of power destruction, didn't reach the colorless stage then he might not have been able to cancel it out and may have just been covered with it. The wave in front of him had been split but the other parts were ruthlessly charging as it headed towards the others. God damn it. Get back. Berk. The people who had seen the waves of black flame started to hurriedly run back but some unlucky people had been swiped up due to the fast speed of the flame. The bodies of the non-dot clansmen that could not escape to the back slightly touched the wave. Slightly. But the people who had been touched by the flame cringed as they screamed. God damn it. Walk. The flame instantly enlarged as if it swallowed the person whole. And the person covered in flames screamed as he rolled about on the floor. The fairy had only thrown one at two thousand people. How could such a thing be weak? The only reason why it had thrown it was because it could still damage them greatly even if it went up against two thousand. He hadn't raised his resistances for nothing. But attacks like that which covered a large area was much weaker in comparison to single dot target skills. But this was only the case for him who had resistances as well as Nirmaha's ring, and the other adventurers who did not have magic resistances had a lot of strength but didn't differ much from ordinary people when it came to flame resistance. Which meant that there wasn't much difference between them and an ordinary man being swept up by a gas container explosion. He was from the Blaze Descent huh? This guy's type was the worst thing possible for people other than him. It might be different if he was of a different descent but the other adventurers basically had almost nothing they to do against this guy. The clansmen and non-dot clansmen hurriedly backed off as they saw the attack that had bursted out. They had realized that its advantages were too horrid to do something with numbers. Just stand like that. Han Su, after looking at the people who weren't approaching him anymore, charged at the demon just like that and the others made a reluctant expression as they looked at the demon and Hansu. Kududuk. Hansu breathed out roughly as he cut off the demon's head. Who? As Hansu cut off the demon's neck, a few runes and a small crystal came out. When Hansu grabbed the runes with his right hand, the rune-eater snake zealously ate the rune as it distributed the runes evenly. And as he grabbed the crystal with his left hand it turned into a small symbol and got engraved on his left hand. The eyes of the people who were watching changed slightly. They couldn't kill it. But there were no rules which said the person who killed it had to take it. As everyone's expressions turned grim, Han Su, who had seen this, smirked. Whoa. Don't stare at me in such a scary way. Dot. As everybody looked at him from those words, Han Su smirked as he spoke. If I go up because it's too scary then who's going to fight that thing from now on? Of course they could kill it if they charge it with numbers. Since they could use a special method which would supplement their resistances with skills. But the fact that casualties would increase was definite. Everyone's expressions contorted from Han Su's words. 
Kabato-chan's Nodek Dud is now busy with life and also takes even more time to improve the translation quality. More support for him would be appreciated. Chapter 32 Central Island, 5, you are listening at NovelFull.audio Hansu shrugged at the glares directed at him. Of course he had no thoughts of going up. This was merely a threat. Since he wasn't to here to pick up a few more runes. And because of that he couldn't concede any of the crystals that would come out from now on. The Lord should have a conversation with me. Everyone made a bitter expression as they approached him, they disappeared from sight to somewhere else while everybody was watching them. TSK. I'm not sure if it was a good thing. Gukti mumbled alone after the conference ended. Hansu's proposal was very simple. He's really a special case. Gukti actually knew that he would concede all the duties of defense and roam about alone. Since there's nobody to stop him even if he did so. It would be just that if he decided to not hunt any of the undead and hunt continuously below and only come back to cut off the demon's head around the time everybody became a mess fighting it. Dot since the possibility of somebody blocking him if he told them he would take the last hit was a question in itself. Who could block him with such power and invisibility? But Han Su didn't do such things. What is he thinking? What? In conclusion, it meant that he would take over the risk of the demons by himself. If you take into account the strength of the demons, it meant that Hansu took on a huge burden alone even if you were to calculate for the benefit of the crystals. From his actions it seemed like he a person who grew impatient because he couldn't save someone. Though there's nothing bad about it. The demons. Are peculiar. There wasn't enough information because only one had come out. He didn't know if they all used similar skills or if stronger ones would come out from now on. Since the problem wasn't strength but rather their advantages. It didn't seem like that they couldn't beat Han Su if everyone in the clan charged at him. But things like that had really horrid advantages. Like rock paper scissors. It was already hard to kill it due to the fact that it took hits very well but for it to also use area of effect magic. It wasn't that they couldn't kill it if they used skills and traits but at least a few tens of deaths would occur. It wasn't a low number even in terms of the whole and if that were to happen every time the demons came then they might all die off. So Hanso's a proposal of him taking over the problem with demons was not bad. And the crystal wasn't that tempting either. That's just a trap. It wasn't really attractive to the clan lords who had to save as many as possible from their clans even if the artifacts that could be gained from collecting those were good and even if the crystal could be used in emergencies. And the reason why they wanted to get it so bad was because it would be very straining if it were to fall into the hands of others. No one knew what sort of crazy thing a sovereign who had attained his own safety would do when things became dangerous. Since they could just escape even if the defenses fall. It's just better for nothing to get solved. Him monopolizing it all was the best option but this was impossible. The many clan lords distribute the crystals. This was a good plan but it didn't really mean much. There won't be much profit if you think of the numbers they would lose while acquiring the crystals as well as the fact that these would make it difficult to determine each other's strength. And there were a few non-dot clansmen with a bit of strength. These guys won't hesitate to hit them from behind during the decisive moments of taking the crystal. Since they could just take the crystal and go up. In whichever way, it was better if both the demons and crystals didn't exist. The fact that Han Su would take everything didn't differ much from the rule which said the drops from a monster which somebody killed goes to that person. Though it gets on my nerve that one person gets all the crystals. He also looked over the catalog. Incredibly menacing artifacts were lined up. If he had to choose between these things going into the clan lord's hands or Han Su's hands then he would choose the latter. Isn't it crazy? Such a thing. An object that you could buy with 15 crystals. All of your allies within 300 meters had all of their stats increased by 15% even if you were just holding it. And if you beat the drum, the effects were even more glorious. 
1 beat to increase the regeneration speed of those who heard it, 2 beats decreased the perception by 15% but increased strength and agility by 25% and 3 beats even increased resistances. You couldn't use it for 5 days once you beat it 3 times but even the thought of another clan other than his having this was frightening. And no matter how he looked at it, the worth of this thing was not merely 15 crystals. The only reason he could think of as to why it had been listed as 15 crystals was one. It was a price that seemed like could be gained if the clan lords hit and killed each other and fought. If it was an absurd price such as 100 then he might have given up but 15 was pretty doable. And it seemed like every object on the catalogue was like this. He didn't know if it was intentional but all the group use objects were much more formidable than self-use objects. As if it was promoting them to hit and receive hits from each other en masse. Wicked bastards. Gukti clicked his tongue as he thought of the fairies. Then Sung Hoon, one of the clansmen, standing next to him asked. A person who had gotten the position of a personal guard because he was his friend and most trusted person. Then shall we give up making the special force? Gukti shook his head at those words. There was no rule saying that the special forces had to be used against demons only. Please keep preparing them. And. There probably is somebody who has known Han Su since the first tutorial. Please find them no matter what and gain some intel. Whatever you can get. Sung Hoon wholeheartedly nodded his heavy expression at those words. And Gukti threw another sentence at that Sung Hoon. And please go down there and find as many people with special psychic powers. Two thousand people. If you search then they would exist. Psychic powers that were good against invisibility. No, not just invisibility. He had chosen people based on how good they were against other humans because he had thought power was the most important thing. This was a miscalculation. Everything from that demon to that guy called Han Su. Their opponents were not mere humans and problems that would be hard to solve with people who could swing their swords well will continue to come up from now on. In order to prepare for all sorts of situations, he needed people with vastly different skills and psychic powers. He had to prepare thoroughly from now on. It's okay as long as I do it properly from now on. He had met a tiger after looking at deers until now. Which meant he just had to prepare a way to deal with the tiger. Since when did humans fight against tigers barehanded? Still. It doesn't seem like it'll be hard to leave this island at this rate. Hansu would take care of demons as others dealt with the undead in turns. He didn't want to acknowledge it but the rules were set up without much commotion thanks to Hansu. Casualties would constantly occur but a lot of people could survive at this pace. But I should still prepare. There was no need to think of the tiger as a friend even if it is helping you. Gukti started to prepare as he thought of Hansu who could be anywhere. Wow. It seems like a lot more of us would survive than I thought. It seems so. Everyone gazed at Hansu who was fighting fiercely with the demon in the distance. At first there was a bit of a resistance when Hansu said he would monopolize the crystals but after a while it was clear that it wasn't a bad choice. Yeah. It's already hard for us to have a look at crystals. It's better for that guy to grapple around with demons and for us to all ascend together alive. Twentieth day of the defense at this moment. The amount of people alive was a huge number of 1300. 600 had died but if they had gone up against the demon, and if the crystals were set loose, then the number of the people alive and dead would be reversed. But Hansu, who had cut off the demon's neck, shook his head. Now the hidden piece will activate. Defensive battle. It really didn't suit his personality. But despite that, he had been focusing on the defense whilst jumping around back and forth and killing off demons constantly. He was managing with his best ability in order to gain crystals to arm himself and to set up the rules so no internal fights occurred. He hadn't even taken a step towards the demon lord's castle because he was also taking care of those who were trying to aim for his back. Since as long as the hidden piece didn't activate, there was no point in going to the demon lord's castle. Hansu mumbled inwardly. 
I'm not sure if you guys coming back would have been better instead, he had seen and learned from watching Keldian and Eris but he could only imitate them and do as well as them. But Han Su shook his head. If it was something that could be solved with one strong sovereign then there was no reason for humanity to have gone extinct. He had come back in order to do things that Eris couldn't. Keeping more than 50% of the people alive by 20th day. I succeeded Eris. But didn't I win this? I saved even more. Hansu had a broad grin. He couldn't unify them as well as Eris but had reduced the damage from the demons as much as possible so he saved even more. And when this happened, the fairy, who couldn't watch the peacefulness of the people, appeared and the hidden peace got activated. It's here. Hello. Everybody. It's already the twentieth day. The people here have really defended well. Normally there's only around 500 alive by now. At these words the people made expressions full of pride as they still grinded their teeth. Since it felt like they fucked the fairy up from the fact that they dodged the hidden motives of the fairy and had defended in such an excellent way. If it stays like this dot then we can ascend without many problems but the fairy grinned as it looked at those people. But what do we do? It gets really bad from now on. Everyone, do you even know how to get out of this island? Everyone mumbled about at those words. How could they know such a thing? The fairy laughed as it spoke. Very simple. After a month, a portal will open from the crystal you guys have been defending. You guys can ascend higher through that. Ha! Huh. But there is a very slight problem. That crystal has a limit. Only 500 people can leave through that crystal. Dot. What to do? Too many survived. Usually I don't even need to come out. Since occasions where more than 500 people surviving don't happen often. Everyone's expression started to gain an edge. The current survivors were 1300. And if they defend in this spirit then at least 1000 could live. However, the amount that could leave was 500. But then the fairy grinned whilst watching these people. Don't worry too much. There's a place with a much larger crystal. There's more than enough for all of you to escape through in that place. Dot where is that? As someone asked, the fairy grinned as it pointed to the demon lord's castle which could be seen from afar. Over there. It normally doesn't work but. I'll start it up now. He he, hung. At those words, a grand noise started to resonate from one location within the demon lord's castle and everyone who heard it grinded their teeth. And at the same time the people started to split up. And Hansu also had a cold expression. It starts. Actually, this was more of a surprise event if you looked at it differently. It was a hidden piece that didn't happen unless the requirement of more than 50% living by the 20th day has been accomplished. Since if it was below that, the numbers would reduce to below 500 whilst defending. Would Eris have gone to the demon lord's castle because she wanted to? Eris didn't know what would come out when he went there back then. He didn't know what he would gain but it was obvious that more people than if they were defending would die. In a situation where Eris wanted as many people to live by combining their strengths, there was no reason for him to go. But there was only one reason which made Eris head towards the demon lord's castle in such a situation. It was all due to this damnable hidden piece. Eris had defended too well. And ironically too many people had survived. While other teams couldn't even keep 200 alive out of 2000 on average, Eris had kept over 1000 people alive before the 20th day arrived. It was the result of firmly rejecting the mini dot crystals and combining the people's strengths. Actually it wasn't only Eris who had activated this hidden piece. There was a few times when people who had gained amazing traits and skills had fought well against the demons and forcefully united the remaining people in order to keep more than 1000 people alive has existed. And the people standing in front of the hidden piece had to make a decision. To head towards the demon lord's castle despite the dangers. Or defend and defend. And have a huge battle royale in order to choose the 500 in the end. 
and after collecting all the intel from the final brigade, there was nobody he knew who had chosen the first option other than Ares. It was obvious, since at least 500 could survive even if they didn't go. And if the 500 people who could live said that they won't go, the remaining people won't be able to go anyway. Since they won't have enough power. We aren't going. It's better to focus on defending. We don't have a reason to go either. Instead of everyone dying by going, let's save 500. The forces split up and grouped up with clan lords as the center. He had taken these people huh? Han Su started to admire Eries. And thought. That he would never be able to become like Eries in his life. Han Su walked forward as he warmed up his body. Translators note guys please understand that as I have three tests this week, it'll be hard for me to pump chapters out. I've already pulled an all-nighter on Saturday Night XX. Please also understand that while each chapter may take only around 10 to 15 minutes to read, it takes hours for it to complete, despite the bad English. Kabato-chan's note so now, the reincarnator's normal releases will be about 3 to 4 chapters a week. Please do throw some money and whip ek dud. One dollar equals one whip o oh, and the two other chapters for today will come a little bit later. Chapter 33 Central Island, 6, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Let's see. Tejin, one of the lords, mumbled inwardly. He didn't know if the demon lord's castle was dangerous or not. But he just needed to decide between the two. Between whether his clansmen could be included within the 500 who would go up or not. If that was possible then there was no reason for him to go to the demon lord's castle. I need to do some traffic control. Asterisk TL. Where have we heard this before? Oh oh. There was a location where they had gathered one of their clansmen each for quick communication during times of emergency. And they could talk through these people and voice their opinions. It was created for an emergency and if this situation wasn't an emergency, what was this then? And their decisions had come to a consensus through the people who voiced the Lord's opinions for them. If they fight with other clans so they could take all of their members up with them then they would all die. If that happened then even 300 of 500 was too much. The best option was for the 12 clans to fill up the 500 spots one by one to ascend. If that happened then they could at least take 40-50 people up with them. They didn't like the fact that all 12 clans ascended alive with similar ratios but it was still a profit. They had gotten strong quickly by going through the underground dungeon and were armed with artifacts. They didn't know the situation in the other islands but if they took 40-50 elite members like them then they could still utilize them to an advantage above. This is solved for now. Once a consensus is met then an answer was set. If they defended here then there was no such occurrences where the clan lords and their elite members couldn't ascend. Since the problem between clans had been solved, the problem was now non.clansmen. Hmm. There's quite a lot of non. Clansmen. It was better the more people you had for defense but the story changes once the people who could live was set to 500. The current total population was 1,300. About 600 clansmen and 700 non-clansmen. The non-clansmen felt uneasy joining clans after seeing the strange scene where people, who were on bad terms even to the point where they tried to kill each other, unnaturally and forcefully get reconciled through the symbols of the clansmen. They would guarantee their safety but it was obvious that people will avoid it if they see their free will being controlled in such a way. And even more so if there was an existence above them called the Lord whom they had to listen to even if they were to command them to suicide. They might have gone in if the situation was dangerous but the fact that the defense progressed flawlessly also contributed in keeping the ratio of clansmen and non.clansmen. But there were too many non.clansmen currently to leave them to just die. If only 600 clansmen are left then the casualties would increase at a shocking rate. So they had to stop them from going. But they didn't need to stop them. Our clan chooses to defend. Us too. Every clan started to shout their choice in defense from all over. And then all the non.clansmen mumbled. 
there's no way they could leave, Tejin laughed inwardly. The weak always had their choices limited. And now those people had to wait for their choices. Bitches. Sangte, one of the people who were in a non-dot-clansman union, grinded his teeth. Damn it. I should have went into a clan when thing were normal. But he couldn't go in from uneasiness after seeing the clansman who had received the symbol. He hadn't joined a clan because he thought he could ascend without many problems if they defended like this but for such an unexpected event to happen. Well. Even if I did go in, I might have been cut. 500 was that low of a number. But in such a case, something bad would happen. There was no way they would leave a spot for the non-dot clansmen to ascend. Since they'll be too busy trying to take all of their people. It seemed like the other non-dot clansmen who were quick to catch on had realized this already as they mumbled about. They had three paths they could choose from in that case. Exclude the clansmen and head towards the demon lord's castle with non-dot clansmen. Form an alliance between the non-dot clansmen and fight the clan for the spot of 500. And final choice. Stay with the clans to fight and hopefully wait for the empty spot that may come their way. God damn it. Sangte shook his head. In reality the two options above were basically impossible. The non-dot clansmen adventurers had long been ripped apart by the clans. The two options above were only possible when they form an alliance and agree with each other to create a clan versus non-dot clan composition. But if they only had the choice of choosing from the two above then they would have gathered their strength in some way. Since they couldn't just sit and die. The damnable fact was that hope still existed. The third option is the problem. If they continue to defend then the number of clansmen will go down. But those guys probably want to fill up 500 completely to ascend. Since it was better the more you had if you thought of the place above. Which meant, there will be space where non-dot clansmen would be able to come into. A much higher chance than the first two which had the chance of a complete massacre. Damn. Can't really do anything then. If this happened then as long as they don't think of getting all the non-dot clansmen to have a fight, they could only get on the good side of the clan unions. It might be barely possible if the 700 remaining people gathered their strengths but if they were split like this then they had no choice. Fuck.as long as we group up then we might be able to do something. Actually the main point of this game was very simple. If they split their power then both sides die. So everyone had to choose one side. Either to defend or to attack. But if one side advocates strongly then the other side could only obediently follow unless they were determined to have a battle royale. So there was no way for the non-dot clan powers to win. Since the clan unions were unified in thought whilst the adventurers of non-dot clan powers were split up all around. And even if they were to emphasize that it was more beneficial for the clan unions, they could only get pushed around whilst holding on to a dim thread of hope. Sangte shouted loudly after pondering. This can't go on like this. Hey. Is there nobody to go with me? Damn it. You know what will happen if you stay here. A few non-dot clansmen flitched at these words but nobody had walked out on their own. Damn it. But while the clan lords were looking at Sangte with ridicule, one person came out from the crowd and walked up next to Sangte. And Sangte frowned as he saw this. Since a person that was totally out of the expectation had walked out. Why are you all so surprised? Han Su, who had walked out into the eyes of the people, shrugged his shoulders as he looked at them. That if you stay here then you will definitely be part of the 500 though. Hansu chuckled at Sangti's words as he spoke. Well. There's always personal circumstances. I'm going to the demon lord's castle. And then one of the non-dot clansmen shouted with hope. Everyone knew. That Hansu had a strange psychic power. Did he perhaps. Choose to go to the demon lord's castle because he knows something. If we follow you, will it be safe? The reason why their ankles were caught was because they could not even imagine how dangerous the road to the demon lord's castle would be. 
since if there was a confirmation for such a thing, there was no reason to stay around here. Han Su shrugged his shoulders at those words. I don't know. The same amount of 500 might survive if we go there, or maybe even less, will more survive if they all combine their strength to head towards the demon lord's castle. He didn't even know this. Since there are too many factors. But he knew one thing for certain. If they stay here then no more than 500 can survive. If 600 were to survive in the end, will the remaining 100 peacefully die? Of course there will inevitably be a collision and the others who aren't part of the 500 will die. On the other hand, Ares had managed to ascend with 600 people out of 1000 after choosing to go to the demon lord's castle. Han Su chuckled as he saw the dejected looks on the people as he spoke. But if you aren't part of a clan it's better to go. If you stay here then the ones taking the risk are you so why would you try to stay here? Even if they were die off the same way, it was a problem of ratio in the end. Even if the same amount of people die on the way as they would if they defended, once they arrive there then they can ascend together. But on the other hand, if they were staying defend and succeed the non-dot clansmen who aren't chosen by the clansmen would all die. At those words, the expressions of everybody who had been pondering this turned fierce as the mumbling got louder. I'm going. Taehee questioned Hyunwoo's words which he spoke out after hearing the story. The Hyunwoo she knew was a safety dot first believer. But then he was risking on such a dangerous looking gamble. Really? Hyunwoo smirked as he spoke. There's something I had found out about him separately. There once was a movement that went around in order to collect intel about Han Su. And as such movements occurred, Hyunwoo became curious as well. No, this was not only Hyun Wu's question. Everyone was curious about that guy fighting there. Since it was weirder to be not curious about that guy who was so eye-catching. And so the rumors of rumors and opinions of opinions combined. It started from the people who had been with Han Su since the first tutorial area and went up to the people who had seen Han Su so far where the intel grouped up and got organized. And the conclusion that came from it. He can be trusted. Surprisingly they said he was strong from the start. There were plenty of ways to take advantage of others in the beginning. He could kill people to pull runes. Or he could hunt and steal all the runes by suppressing others with his strength. But he wasn't like that. No, he was actually extremely thorough in distribution. He had eaten things to the point where it was close to monopolization but as they heard, he only fought in dangerous places. Which was the same if you looked at him fighting the demons right now. And I like the fact that he doesn't get swept around by useless emotions the most. One of the things he hated the most were people who wanted to get carried around. But as they heard, if they couldn't pay up for their own worth then he did not care about them. Of course they couldn't confirm just by piecing together rumors. There was just one important fact. That others were probably thinking the same way as him. The chance has come. It has been a while since the rumor of him being rather trustable had been going around. Since he proved it with his actions rather than words. He didn't neglect in hunting down the undead while taking down demons. And because of that he was worth having as the center. And they had to group up in order to break the game where the clans were the center. If they go on with the current situation, the clans won't have to take any risks while they had to shoulder all of the risk. BDNV the non-dot-clansmen adventurers would die off in piles even if they chose to defend. And the ones who couldn't get into clans would be thrown off in the end. Hyun Wu shouted loudly as he walked towards Han Su. I'm following. And then Hyun Wu discreetly poked Tae Hee. Hey. You follow too while shouting loudly. Taehee chuckled as she shouted. I'm going too. Dick dot like clan bastards. That you don't have to go that far. Why is this girl's mouth so dirty? Well whatever happened, as the two walked out straightforwardly as they shouted, mumbles were heard from all around then curses were heard as well. I. Bitches. Being bossed around is annoying. I'm going too. Fuck. 
there's no way that the fairy would have said it so only one of attack or defense would be easy. They weren't heading out because they were just pissed. Since it was an important judgment where their lives were at stake. But if they carried on like this then the situation will flow the way the clans wanted after they swing back and forth under the clan's dominion. They were confident that this was more dangerous than going to the demon lord's castle. This crazy that you can't move. It's not child's play, why would you move at such incitements? While a clansman got flustered and tried to stop them after seeing everyone moving and mumbling, something ruthlessly flew down and embedded itself from the sky. Boom. Who work? Why are you blocking them when they're saying they'll go on their own feet? Leave them be. Han Su smirked as he spoke. The clan lords turned gloomy as they saw the giant chain sickle which had flown from Han Su and landed in front of the clansman's foot. It was a weapon Han Su brought back one day whilst fighting the demons. They had known what this was. Since it was on the catalogue. Cost. 60 crystals. An armament that couldn't even be compared to which costs 15. From the beginning the fairies probably didn't expect that someone who would buy such a thing would come out. Since they probably didn't think that there could be a guy who could monopolize all the demons that came out. You guys over there should think about it again. Since a man's thoughts can change. Gukti clenched his teeth as he looked at Hansu who was talking to them whilst retrieving the chains. Damn it. He's the problem again. The thing that made so many people move was not the words that Hansu had spoken. The core point was the actions and the power that grinded the demons which Hansu had shown while defending. He might have been less annoyed if they struggled to form a non-dot-clansman union but the fact that this had happened because a guy who didn't do anything and only hunted stepped out and spoke a few words annoyed him even more. Because the effort in which they put in to gather people and have a power struggle felt like it was being mocked. Damnable bastard. Gukti was locked in worry as he looked at the 200 non-dot clansmen who were running behind Hansu and were increasing rapidly. Do I need to pull out the special forces? Gukti pondered if he should forcibly shut this situation down with the hidden piece that he had prepared for a moment but he shook his head instead. If they were to collide in this situation, it would be a battle royale. I'll follow your orders for now. Gukti started to quickly converse with the other clan lords. Proofreaders note damn no info on Hansu's new shiny equipment frowning face with open mouth Kabato-chan's note hmm, you will discover it soon. Chapter 34 Demon Lord's Castle, 1, you are listening at novel full dot audio. Well. It practically became like this. Hansu mumbled as he looked at the scene in front of his eyes. 600 of clan union and 700 of non-dot-clan union. How would the clan union stay behind if all the of non-dot-clan union decides to go to the demon lord's castle? The result was already set. I should at least do the thing I need to before I leave. He couldn't leave a single margin of error. As soon as Hansu made his decision, he started to loosen up the and wildly swung it around. Chark. The fact that its chain could stretch up to a few hundred meters, the fact that the chain won't break even if a demon were to pull on it as well as the shape of the scythe were very alluring but the true worth was in its skills. The skills that possessed were two. One was on the chain and the other was on the scythe attached to the end of the chain. The skill that was on the scythe was. It absorbed the mana of the user and then gave powerful destruction and explosive capabilities gave to the scythe. It was a skill that was simple, but extremely formidable and faithful towards its objective as a weapon. It was better than frost skills or explosive flame skills that were uselessly extravagant. And the skill on the chain was. This was not a skill that was activated by spending the user's mana. It actually activated by absorbing the enemy's mana and the one who got tied by it would constantly lose mana as well as get cursed with which lowered all their stats. A formidable artifact that was befitting of 60 crystals. Actually there were a few artifacts that Hansu could purchase with 60 crystals but Hansu had chosen the chain scythe. Chain scythes were very difficult to use. 
And in this world, if the costs were the same then there were as much advantages as weaknesses towards each other. Difficult weapons often had high specs if they had similar costs. This was the same for Judgment of Decrados. The two skills on were simple but a lot stronger and more efficient than other artifacts. Weapon types aren't important. Hansu wasn't really lucky in terms of artifacts. He couldn't even imagine obtaining an amazing artifact and using it constantly like Kongte so he used whatever he could get his hands on or had good options. And the chain scythe was included in those. The chain scythe, which had a higher chance of having stronger skills in comparison to other weapons, was very attractive to Han Su who didn't really have his traits and skills set up properly and because of that he would use it for a long time. He had gotten a habit of sustaining such a battle style for over 50 years so he could use most weapons properly. Which meant that using it wasn't a problem. Only the options were important. Han Su, who had loosened up the chains, used centripetal force to throw the extremity of the chain scythe towards a direction aggressively after the chain had lengthened quite a bit. Hook. The extremity of the chain scythe flew towards the crystal on the top of the castle at an extreme speed. The skill which was on the chain scythe, activated as it drained Hansu's mana. Boom! The crystal broke apart as it couldn't withstand the might of the skill on the chain scythe and the people who had seen this shouted in shock. What the fuck? What are you doing? Hansu smirked at those words. What's the problem is we're going to advance. If we leave a hold to escape then we'll all die. Dot. A few people made guilty expressions at those words. These people had thoughts of returning to the castle if they advanced and things didn't really roll out well. And this tendency was rather strong in a few of the clan lords of the clan unions. But only for a moment. A clansman who had been sent below came back as he spoke. The dungeons are closed. Tisk, it seemed like the dungeon closed along with the appearance of the fairy. Which meant that leaving was indeed the better option. Since they'll just get piled up if they stay here. Karuru. As the crystal exploded, the island started to shake in a rough manner. And then the fairy's voice resonated from the air. Everyone made a complicated expression at those words but then shook their heads as they headed towards the demon lord's castle. The road heading towards the demon lord's castle was structured very differently from the ones until now. Unlike the situation during the defense where the non-dot-clansmen and clansmen were mixed up with the twelve clans as the center, it was now split up between clan unions and non-dot-clansmen adventurers. It was something they had realized painfully from what they had been doing until now. That the clan unions can throw them off at any time. And they needed to group up in order to prevent that. Of course everyone's thoughts couldn't be the same so there were a few people who went into the clan unions who have caught them in their eyes but there were still about 500 people grouped up separately. Dot so you came to me because of that. Hyun Wu and Tae Hee nodded at those words. Yeah. We're just following while believing in you. Han Su opened his mouth after looking at Hyun Wu for a while after those words. There isn't much that I can do for you. Hyun Wu chuckled as he spoke. Don't worry. I'm not asking you to take care of all our lives. Just stay in that position well. He didn't long for care. He was content if Han Su acted as the flag which everyone could see and follow. Since they had been pushed around because they didn't have that flag. There isn't a single person who wouldn't try to improve their future in times of danger in such a damnable world as this. And because of this, the most important thing was to have enough strength to save themselves. Since they didn't know what would happen during times of crisis no matter how good of a personality they had during normal times. And because of that, Han Su was more than enough. And well. Even if we only follow, the surrounding enemies almost get smashed apart. Taehee clicked her tongue as she looked at Hyun Wu while he was thinking about this and that. Dot it seems like he has been infatuated. Han Su shook his head as he looked at these two. Hmm, though they seemed like they were well bunched up, and though they were just following him around, a human's thoughts are something which changes very rapidly in times of crisis. Towards a safer side. 
But Han Su just shrugged his shoulders as he advanced. I just need to do what I'm supposed to do. The three gateways they needed to go through in order to get to the demon lord's castle. Door of bones, door of flesh and door of blood. Han Su quickened his footsteps towards the first gateway in the distance, the door of bones. Chararak. The chain, which was a few hundred meters in length, cut apart the air restlessly. It wasn't only the extremity of the scythe that could be used as a weapon. The scythe pulverized the enemies as the scythe should and the chain was coiling around the surroundings without rest. Once the chain suppressed the enemy enough, Hansu flickered the edge of his right hand to control the scythe and charged forward with a blade and stabbed down at the enemy who was entwined by the chains. Ku Wawang. One of the demons, which had been stabbed by Hansu's weapon, screamed. Hansu didn't just have one weapon. There were seven daggers around Hansu's thighs and there was also a padao and a medium-sized greatsword by his waist. There weren't any limitations from carrying this many weapons due to the increased strength. The problem was whether he could utilize all of these weapons or not. From the, which Hansu had stabbed into the enemy demon, an effective hemorrhage bursted out as blood started to flood. Kadak. Kaduduk. Hansu didn't rest there as he started to put injuries all over Demon's body as he stabbed his daggers into its body. Judgment of Decrados wasn't used properly just because one used. Rather, the true worth of the weapon shown when you were able to use effectively as well. Dot and the chain and scythe were restlessly flying around Hansu's surroundings. But of course it wasn't alright even if he was Hansu. When it received the attack of the enemy, a strange curse injured the body of the one who had attacked them. Hansu was holding on with his resistances and Nirmaha's ring but blood was flowing out from his body as injuries occurred one by one. But if one were to hesitate because of such things, they would receive an even greater injury. Kuduk. Kuduk. Hansu ignored the light wounds as he cancelled out the curse which activated when he stabbed the heart of the demon with the Nirmaha's ring, took the runes and crystal which had dropped from its body and then flew off somewhere else as he bound up his surroundings with the chain and stepped on it. Since there wasn't much time for leisure in the current situation. Wayok. Damn. It's a mage. Kill that first. Ache. Endless screams could be heard all around. A huge number of undeads and demons which couldn't even be compared to before. They weren't really giving large amounts of casualties to people. Since the demons came in pairs when they charged and since both of them were bound by Hansu's chain. And even now, one had just died at Hansu's hands and the other one was fervently battling Hansu and his chain scythe. The thing which had caused the most damage to them were mages. Skeletal Mage it was a weak mob in games but reality was cruel. Every time skills exploded out from its hands, even though it was only poison, frost and fire for a total of three elements, it froze people down to their bones and burned their skins. And the fact that it was long-ranged and had an AOE move bugged them more. Hansa's chain scythe was turning them into powder whenever it had the leisure to but there were many occurrences where people were screaming here and there after getting hit by the skills. And the clan lords were looking at their surroundings with cold expressions. It was important to maintain their battle strength before but it was even more important as of now. Since they could take all of their maintained battle strength up along with them. In the defensive war, where the defense areas were set between them, their improvements and the damage they received were very similar. But in a situation like this where they were advancing, it was much more different. Since no matter how fair you set up the rules, one's actions changed how much damage they received by a lot. But no matter what Gukti did, he was still the leader of a group. He had the duty of keeping alive as many clansmen as possible. Was being greedy that bad? We could at least adjust the speed at which we advanced if the crystal wasn't destroyed. Damn. No matter how much of the battle strength he wanted to save, there was a limit to it. The vibration which resonated throughout the island was getting larger. The fairy had told them that there were over ten days left but nobody knew if those ten days were enough for them to get to the demon lord's castle. 
Playing chicken is only when you can, what sort of meaning would playing chicken have in a situation where you would get massacred anyway if you hit around in the back? The clan lords could only advance forward while accounting for the danger. Anyway, are the demons coming out at similar difficulties? Gukti looked at the demon, which Hansu was killing, coldly. He was worried that a stronger demon might come out when they got to the demon lord's castle. But it seemed like these were at the same level as those during the defenses. And at that moment a noise came from the ground as another demon came up from beneath. Wakak. Another one came out. Dodge it. Unlike the defensive stage where they had something to protect, this was over as long as you could arrive there. There was nobody who wanted to go up against the strong demon. All the non dot clansmen flew away like flies in all directions. But a few clan lords laughed as they looked at the chaos. It came out at a good timing. If they don't account for their weaknesses then they were a failure as a human being before being a lord. The clansmen of evil and Kong Hansu. Those crazy things were jumping about around him and showing off their strength. Didn't he prepare something for such a situation? The fifteen special forces, which Gukti had been saving, came out. These were the guys who were armed with the runes, skills and artifacts of other clansmen. Warriors created to fight monsters with their raised resistances and attack power. Though I've been saving them in order to reduce casualties. He was going to save them if stronger demons came out on the way to the demon lord's castle. But what if they were around the same level? If it's that much then they can hunt without casualties. They didn't need to depend on Han Su. I'll show you. As to who should really be in the center. The thing that they weren't comfortable with wasn't just Hansu's power. It was the fact that he was acting as the center of the non-dot clansmen. And the reason that he could fight the demons up front was a large factor as to why he could do that. Since they believed that it'll be safer if they followed Han Su rather than the clans. But if they could fight the demons then they didn't have a reason to group up with Han Su as the center. There was no worry for traitors either. Since the clans could just take them all in. Well. It is just so even if it seems uncomfortable. They will soon realize. That it'll get more and more dangerous and that they had to hold on to a reliable pillar. And in order to do so, he had left them alone with the mages. Let's see what happens. If the non dot clansmen that you trust in so much come to me, there was no reason to hurry. They could advance slowly, like water being absorbed through. Go. At these words, the fifteen special forces that Gukti had prepared advanced forward in order to hunt down the demon. Chapter 35 Demon Lord's Castle, 2, you are listening at novel full. Audio. Ha, Han Su chuckled at the movements he felt behind him. I wondered what he was preparing so hard for. Han Su nodded. It seemed like they were well prepared as they employed the method they learned from Han Su fighting the demons. Artifacts that could slow down the movements of the demons instead of ones that would damage them fatally. And resistances and buffs to deal with the basic AoE attacks of the demons. They had a decent assortment. Their movements and attacks couldn't follow up to Hansu's. But they were filling the gaps with various skills and traits. If you do that then you can definitely hunt it safely. The opposite method of Hansu's. If Hansu was trying to catch it as fast as possible by taking on the hits while trusting his resistance and his dodges to suppress it down with an overwhelming attack then this method was a safe hunting method in order to receive no casualties whatsoever. The fifteen special forces were rotating endlessly as they injured the demon. This was possible because they could withstand the demon's skills to an extent. They couldn't reduce the damage like Han Su but they were compensating it with healing skills. While Han Su was about to finish off his demon, the special forces had also pulled out both the hearts from the demons. The people's expressions turned grave. They had thought that only Han Su could kill the demons but the clan lords were killing them well too. And as they started killing the demons, the other clan lords pulled out their own special forces that they had hidden and basically crushed the mages apart. 
The mages were very threatening to the non-dot clansmen who didn't have my magic resistance but it wasn't really hard for the special forces, who had magic resistances as well as heals and other skills, to deal with it. And the most attractive thing was their number. Han Su was one person. That fact did not change no matter how strong he was. But the sum of the different clan lords' special forces were over 100 and they were hunting that much more efficiently. Dot if this happens then isn't it better to just join the side of the clans? Somebody mumbled. Han Su was strong but he only had one body. And the non-dot clansmen were constantly getting injured from the mages. On the other hand, the clan unions were advancing while receiving the thorough protection of the special forces. Bitches. If they had such things then they should have protected us too. As one person gazed at the special forces in resentment, a friend next to him, whom he had gotten close to during the defense, shook his head. Those words don't even make sense. You think they would protect you? Why would they protect them? They weren't even part of the clans. The friend, who had been talking, looked at the demon lord's castle in the distance. This was the first day. There was a long way to go. Disliked things were disliked things, so he had to decide rationally. He started to ponder after laying down his possibilities of choices. Either to stay in the non-dot clansman union. Or shamelessly go under the clan union. That it's not that bad. The reason why he was worried about being thrown off was because the number that could move through the crystal was limited to 500. But on the other hand, that problem did not exist anymore. No, the clan unions would actually welcome them instead. Since the adventurers who received their symbols would become part of their powers and ascend together. Well. Let's at least talk about it. If not then I can just stay here. It wasn't bad for them no matter what happened. If they were denied then they could just follow Hansu's back. And if they were welcomed then they just needed to fight under the clans. And soon multiple people with similar thoughts started to head towards the clans and Gupti smiled inwardly as he saw this. As I thought. What kind of loyalty would these guys have? They were just grasshoppers looking around for safe areas. The only reason they had gone under Han Su was because he looked quite reliable and because it would be dangerous for them if they stayed behind. As long as their motives for going under Han Su were clear, the answer was already set. Yes. Come. We will take you in. It won't take long. Until he will be left alone. I'm curious. As to how far you can go alone. The people keep leaving. Is it alright like this? Hyun Wu mumbled as he looked at the 300 or so people left, they're all so amazing. Hyun Wu mumbled quietly. They had split up like this within a day of deciding to group up. No, if you look at it another way then it might be something obvious. There aren't many people who have something more important than their own lives. Especially in a world like this where family, love and faith was hard to maintain. Han Su chuckled at Hyun Wu's words as he spoke. Well. It's not that bad. If they fight that well. Han Su actually thought that the clan unions were rather good. Those guys, who had set up a way to fight against a difficult enemy with near perfection in 20 days, were actually worthy of praise. And no matter what happened, it was easier to control them if there were more people in the clan union than in the non-dot clan union. In conclusion, this would increase the number of people who would live and even the speed in which they would advance towards the demon lord's castle. But doesn't the fact that they're taking the crystals piss you off or anything? Han Su shook his head at Hyun Wu's words. The things he had been worrying about until now were two things. People dying at the hands of demons because they tried too hard to get their hands on the crystals and the people who had gained the crystal ascending just like that. But such things won't happen anymore. There was nothing bad about it because the special forces were hunting demons safely and it was only fair for the killer to take the crystal. And Ares had saved 600 out of 1000 people. If they advance like this then it meant that the clan lords and their core members won't fall into danger. But why would they leave their gathered powers here and ascend with the crystals? 
Actually, if they fought better by buying artifacts with the crystal then it was even better for him. Since he will be able to arrive at the demon lord's castle with the best bodily condition. It'll be so much better if they only did things up to this point. As soon as his words ended, Gukti walked towards him audaciously from afar. Since we caught it the ownership belonging to us is definite right. Hansu nodded his head. Of course. The ownership of the items that dropped from the beast or demon that you killed belongs to you. Gukti shrugged his shoulders. Well yeah. He won't fall for simple things such as this. He had thoroughly guarded the crystals from being distributed. And because of this, if he had said something about it then he was going to show some supremacy with that as the reason. He was strong but of course they would win if they put their special forces, which numbered over a hundred, in front of them and pushed him back. And currently the people under him were quickly dropping out. He thought that once he suppressed him, the three hundred people stuck to him will drop off in piles but to come out in such a calm manner. Well. It's not that bad. It wasn't that bad as he saw the guy who hadn't allowed for his intentions to bend act like this. Well. We'll be in more of an advantage as the time goes on. There was no need to hurry. Since the gap will continue to grow. Once he gathered the crystals and got equipped with artifacts like the drum of Lempel, the gap will clearly get widened. EY. Fucker. Hansu chuckled at Hyun Wu, who was cursing as he looked at Gukti in the distance, and then started to count the number of crystals he had. But if I collect crystals at this rate then I can even obtain. Was a said item. If he were to obtain, which he needed 55 crystals for, then he would be able to progress through the demon lord's castle with much more ease from the synergy of the two. If they advance on friendly terms like this then he might even be able to save more than Eris. Though it seems that it'll be hard. Hansu finished his thoughts and then jumped at the demons just like that. Kududuk. Hansu swung his scythe widely towards the special forces that were slowly approaching the demon which he was fighting the ground dug up following the path of the scythe and because of this the special force members stopped their movements. Hansu smirked at those special forces. Don't really need to help though. Sung Hoon, one of the special forces, grinded his teeth and then spoke out. But no matter how I see it, it seems very unfair. What does? Sung Hoon pointed at the corpse of the demon which was on the ground. You are catching three at the same time. And with just a chain on you. Since they had gotten under the clans, they couldn't prevent damage from the mages from reaching the clansmen anymore. And because of this the lords split up their special forces. Sixty people were fighting the demons with around twelve people to one while the remaining forty were to go up against mages. But while the sixty were hunting five, Hansu killed three by himself. As if he had spat on them already, he tied them up one by one with the chains and then killed them off one by one. There was a difference in speed due to the fact that they were fighting rather safely in order to prevent injuries from happening to every precious special force member whilst Han Su was charging in like a maniac without caring for his body. But even so, they were 60 people. And not any 60, these were the elites who were created by combining psychic powers, skills and runes by using the resources of the whole clan. Han Su smirked as he spoke. That's why I first moved to action when you came to kill them. Just like before. Dot damnable bastard what had occurred was that he had split up two of the three demons, who were tied up by the chain, to approach another six of them at a time. He had tied up three but only fought one at a time so they had split up a team to approach the other two which were tied up. And then this guy just let loose the chains which tied the two up, which of course made the demons go on a rampage, and almost caused one of the special forces to die. Damnable. It seemed like there were many demons but once they started killing them, there weren't as many of them. The number of demons which had appeared to them within the past three days was about fifty. While they killed thirty, Hansu had eaten up nineteen of them all alone. And because of this the lords couldn't keep up their face. Since they had killed thirty with twelve people. And they couldn't even get ten when they fought for ten days straight. 
On whose nose did they want to stick this? TL. Korean saying describing inadequate things, this won't do. Sung Hoon quickly backed off with a cold expression and then hurriedly walked towards his lord, Gukti. A genius is really a genius. He had a gist of it but for their hunting speeds to have that much of a difference. Well. The crystals aren't the important things. The crystals were bonuses no matter what happened. Gukti sighed after making a fed up expression then thought of his motives. He had thought about the past when he read the romance of three kingdoms. Asterisk TL. Whoever does not know what this is, go read it. But here there were twelve clans. It was likely that the stage would get smaller as they went higher and higher. If they think about organizing things later then it'll be too late. Let's see. If you say it takes ten days then the remaining time is seven days. If you discard the fact that they had to go up against undeads and demons without stopping as they advanced, it was a rather long time. But it wasn't that long in order to complete his plans. I acknowledge the fact that you're strong. Acknowledge. He was really strong. Even more so than the clan he created with all his might. And he will think that from now on, there will be times where his individual strength would surpass the strength of a group. I really want to take him. But he had already looked into this. As he heard, he had already denied the proposals of other clans. But everyone probably poked him once at least. And to his knowledge, he denied all of them. It seems like there's a reason. He had many things that he kept hidden. The fact that he didn't ascend despite having crystals was suspicious too. Well. Thanks to that there's an opportunity for me if I cannot use it then others cannot either. That was too dangerous. Even if things were to get dangerous because of his disappearance, he could just escape using the crystals along with his core members and special forces. Though they had a connection, the level in which the sovereign and the ones below, the people with symbols, were very different. A sovereign wouldn't tell a general to not go to war because he treasures the general. There's no need for me to do it personally. It'll be over if he made somebody go get hit by the blade and die. Even better if the blade got damaged. Let's see. Somebody who would be the easiest to make him fall into such a trap is. Tejin. Gukti ordered something to the clansmen below through the message as he got up and headed towards Tejin. Tejin stared coldly at Hansu, who was standing in front of the giant door made of bones. Because he thought of the words of another clan lord, Gukti. And then he said that this fact needed to be remained a secret from others in order to avoid the eyes of the other clans. Thought this bastard. You deny my offer but accept Gukti's. Tejin grinded his teeth. Of course he wasn't dumb and didn't believe right away. So he had threatened that Hyun Woo guy who was always with Han Su. And he found out that there indeed were positive talks going between Han Su and Gukti. It cannot happen. It cannot. Gukti already had the most power out of the twelve clans. It was comparing the height of acorns but a huge difference was created once that guy came in. Though they were secret allies within the clan union, how could he just watch things like this when he didn't know what would happen after they went up? This bitch that I had left him alone because he was in a neutral position. There was a huge difference even if they say that the power between him and the affiliated person were the same. And it'll be a huge burden once the crystals in his hands go into Gukti's hands. I need to make some preparations. He fought all the way in the very front. So a chance will come by if he looks for one. Especially if it's near that dangerous looking and suspicious door. Yeah. You've been quite comfortable up until now. Unfitting of this damnable world. Tejin grinded his teeth after seeing Han Su and the giant door made of bones in the distance as he proceeded to order something towards the clansmen below. Kabadochan's note Koyat 508 is a real good proofreader. You should praise our new proofreader. And by the way, from onward, the reincarnators, regular, chapters will be scheduled for the Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and or Saturday. Otherwise, sponsored chapters. Thank you.
Chapter 36 Demon Lord's Castle, 3, you are listening at NovelFull.audio Hyunwoo gulped his saliva as he looked between Hansu next to him and the giant door made of bones in the distance. Hansu. You at least feel good. Since you can escape during times of crisis because you have the crystal. And then Hansu chuckled at Hyunwoo who was looking at him enviably. Don't worry. I'm not going. Yeah. Well. Logically speaking, you're probably here because you have something to gain. Hansu chucked as he looked at Hyunwoo who was mumbling, because you'd gone up if that wasn't the case. Well. Those words are right. It was better for him to go up than to stay down here since he wasn't a clan lord who logically had to save everybody. Since the hunting efficiency here was rather low. The only runes that came out were from killing the demons but the amount they dropped wasn't really satisfying it if you take into account their strength. Some people who have already fulfilled the requirements of other islands rather quickly were probably already roaming around the most attractive area out of the islands above, the. Since this fact was already on the island maps. But he hadn't come here for such things from the start. Demonic Jade Crystal if he didn't obtain the from the end of the demon lord's castle then there was no point even if he got to the end of the final dungeon. He wouldn't have known its existence without Eris. Eris wasn't in a condition to utilize it properly but he could pull out all the power from the demonic jade crystal. He had come here for the demonic jade crystal, the judgment and justice of Decrados were merely part of the process. About 21 crystals collected. Also, if he were to hunt with ease then he could probably obtain the justice of Decrados also. It kind of seems like the clan lords don't like you much. Is it because you're strong? There was no reason to hate Hansu in Hyunwoo's eyes. He helped others well, was diligent in his own part of the work and felt very secure because he was strong. There were basic rules and he was very diligent in following them. The reason why the non-dot clansmen had followed him at the start was because of this. Though they had all split up now. Hansu chuckled as he spoke. Well there's that but dot it's as you say. They just don't like me. The road was long and they didn't know when an enemy will appear. If they thought logically then they had to combine their strength in order to defeat the enemy. But lords were a little different. Historically speaking, it wasn't that the kings did not slash off the necks of capable generals because there was an enemy. Lords instinctively hated people who didn't work in their way. Lord of a clan. As soon as you awake the trait, you realize it instinctively. That your words became the law and the rules within this household. He didn't know himself but according to the words of Eris, it was a very addictive and amazing feeling where you are living in the modern society and then getting into a situation where others had to listen to your words. And they tried to increase the number of their clan because of this. To increase their influence inside and outwards as well as to apply the rules they created. The reason why the lords increased their power wasn't just for survival. But who would like it when somebody else were to come and then tell them to follow different rules? It was a different problem from their own rules being right or wrong, he, who was an, couldn't have a good relation with lords from the start. Well they might not be able to judge things reasonably. The lords who had been around for tens of decades were growing impatient because they couldn't kill him. The fact that the ones who just became lords were around him and were suppressing themselves was even more amazing. Since reason and emotion are different from the start. And when somebody sets their mind on something, they're bound to create some reason for it in their head. They still need to grow a lot. A new ability. And a new world where they can use it freely. It was obvious that they wanted to swing around the fascinating new sword that they had obtained. And getting angry was normal since they met somebody which their sword, which usually worked well, didn't work against but they needed to see more and hear more. And they had to realize that this was just the start. And that was why they needed to escape the tutorial area in order to survive. The most important quality of a lord wasn't suppressing the other lord. Suppressing oneself and knowing how to work with other lords was the most important thing. 
Even Kuang Gunju and the Lord of Dark Angler weren't self-assertive. Well. It's a little early for them to know of it. Anyways, I should try a little bit harder. What would he do by showing off his strength against baby lords in the tutorial area? The people here were people who came from living in the real world and had only been here for about a month. They might look at him in a marvelous way but if Han Su wasn't able to do at least this much then Kong Tae would have probably went overboard. His real rivals were people who have been here for a few years or even 20 years while going through all sorts of hardships from square one. People who had broken through a tutorial like this over 10 or so years ago and had been roaming around the other world for a long time. His goal wasn't to be ahead of others by 1 to 2 years. He had to catch up to 20 years between him and them. Han Su loosened up the tension in his body as he approached the first gateway, the Door of Bones. The time it will take to eat up the rest of the members will be about 3 days. It seems it'll take a while. The Non. Clansmen couldn't follow him. They will receive more damage than usual as the environment gets harsher if they did not have the commands of a lord. And that was why he induced the clan lords to absorb them back in. Since it seemed like most members had been absorbed into the clans, things were doable. Let's have a look here. They'll have some sort of an image as they see how he deals with the gatekeeper. Han Su smiled at Hyun Wu then slowly walked forward. Gukti frowned as he looked at the giant door in front of him. A giant door that seemed like it was made of hundreds of thousands if not millions of bones. One could see that from the door that reminded of France's Arc de Triomphe, a fearful aura was coming off from it. Let's see. The remaining number is 1,200. 100 died in three days. From one's view it was merely a trivial loss. This was a result that came off from Han Su and the special forces fighting the demons competitively. If both of them were slugging about then the damage would have skyrocketed. Well. Since they have almost absorbed them all. As people saw that Han Su didn't care about keeping them safe and was focused on hunting the demons, they all ran and joined the clans. They had all realized. Though Han Su can hunt all the demons with his body alone, that he could not defend them from the attacks of countless mages if they didn't go into the clans then the special forces wouldn't defend them and then they'll be wide open against the attacks of the mages. Though the people who had survived from Hansu hunting the demons were hundreds, being safer was the better option. While Gukti was making a satisfied expression, a familiar existence appeared in front of the giant door. Hello everyone. Welcome to the first of the three doors, the Door of Bones. There wasn't any other name that more befitting. The fairy who had seen the people's expressions nodded. It's very simple. Do you see the giant door over there? You just need to get past it. Dut, dut it's closed. The giant door that the fairy pointed to was firmly closed. But then climbing the walls that stretched tens of meters next to it seemed impossible. No, if they were meant to be climbed then why would the door exist? We don't even know if the fairy might kill us as an example on the way up. Their lives were too precious to test climbing up the wall when they could just talk it out. The fairy laughed as it spoke. Ehe. You need to pay a passing fee. Everyone made a bitter expression at those words. What do we need to pay with? The fairy shrugged as it spoke. What else? The crystals on you guys. Crystals. Just pay 30. Then it'll be a free pass. Dot. Curses almost exploded out from their mouths. The sum total they had hunted in the past three days was 50. And there were only about 30 in their possession. But for them to pay 30 crystals in order to open a door. Which meant they had to hand over their lives too. The reason why they were able to plan things about while trying so hard was because they had a backup plan which came from the crystals. The which was right above the central island, was shown on the island's map and was told to have even more opportunities than now. The reason why the name Central Island was given was because it was an island right below the tower. And they, who had already gained a lot in the central island, could still look out for opportunities even if they go up with heavy losses. 
but if they lose the crystals then they would have to give up on all of those opportunities. And the fairy had told them clearly. That there were three doors. Which means there was a chance that they will get robbed two more times like this from now. Gukti struggled to maintain his expression and then spoke. Is there a way to pass without paying? The fairy nodded at those words. Simple. You need to kill the gatekeeper. Gatekeeper. Yes. Gatekeeper. As soon as the fairy's words ended, a fearful vibration started to ring throughout the ground. The origin of the vibration was the door in front of them. Kadudaduk. You do duck. The hundreds of thousand if not millions of bones that had made up the door mixed and intertwined as it turned into something giant. Wolf. Somebody spoke out in dismay as they saw the giant wolf that stretched 50 m long from head to its tail. Jarrrrrrrrr. Though it was made of bones, there were blue flames burning from its eyes. And this was from 30 m above them. It was only 30 m on paper, it felt like a building was standing up and growling at them. It didn't even squeak like the weak skeletons. Since the number of bones that its body consisted of was too many to do so. The people made fearful expressions as they saw the giant black wolf made of bones that were polluted black. The fairy laughed as it saw those people. Here. There isn't a moon anymore right? If you aren't going to pay then you just need to walk beneath it. Jarrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Kabata-chan's note the reincarnators' regular chapters are scheduled for the Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and or Saturday. Otherwise, sponsored chapters, if there are, thank you. Chapter 37 Demon Lord's Castle, 4, you are listening at novelfull.audio. We're fighting. There's two more gateways after this, what are you planning to do if you give the crystals over to it here? God damn it. You don't know about that. Tejin clenched his teeth at Hansa's words. Is he out of his mind? Just say you don't want to if you didn't want to give the crystals. Who in their right state of mind would try to fight that monster? But he couldn't assert his position strongly because he felt like that was the correct choice. Didn't you grind your blade fervently? Then you should at least try swinging it against the strong. Fuck. Han Su, who had finished his wards, started to untie the weapons from his body slowly. Tejin grinded his teeth at this sight. God damn it. Is it really doable? He didn't know about other things but one thing was clear. That Hansu's fighting ability was simply monstrous. And when such a person had told him to try and have a bout with it, he weirdly thought that it might be doable. And he had said he even had psychic powers. I'm the crazy one. He was actually getting tempted by a point with no basis to back it up. Tejin clenched his teeth as he flinched at his weirdly tempted mind. No. I need to be careful of guys like him. When somebody, who was rather good with the sword in the beginning, ambushed him and his friends, they easily suppressed him. Though he was strong, there were still five including him and his friends. He had let him go alive because he thought that the speed in which one got stronger couldn't catch up the speed of five. Since he thought that was the right choice at that time. The greatest misconception was thinking that he would come back alone next time as well. But he did not come back alone. He had brought others behind him. His friends had all died and he barely survived and escaped. And when he awakened his trait and gained more power, he killed them all and then vowed. That it was not okay for him to let people who were as dangerous as him alive. Han Su wasn't the problem. Even if he was perfectly normal, it'll be dangerous if he were to go into a dangerous household. Especially in a household where it is composed of a lord symbol which was hard to disobey. One could tell Gukti was dangerous with just a simple glance. That was why he had allied with him but this decision was something he laid down because he felt that fighting against him was doable. He didn't like that guy but he didn't mind holding hands with a dangerous and strong guy in order to defend his followers. But if someone like Han Su goes under Gukti and heeds his command then it will become uncontrollable. He had to do his best to supervise the dangers for the people who receive his mark with trust. While Tejin was pledging to himself within his mind, Han Su rose from his seat. I'll finally get to use this thing properly. The gatekeeper was one of the greatest reasons why he had bought this in the first place. He couldn't control and lead everyone like Eris. But he could do the thing which he was the best at. I'm fighting in the very front. And the others didn't have the leeway to choose. Let's go. Only people of the special forces level and people whose long dot ranged skills reach 250m in range follow. It seems like some of you could do it in combination to your psychic powers. And the healers should be stationed 500m behind. The commander's aura drain the health of the people nearby. They'll just become baggage if they don't have magic resistance. Dot. What are you doing? Not coming with me. If you aren't coming then I'm going to drag that thing over here. This crazy bastard. Everyone was frightened at the sight of Hansu who seemed like he was about to pounce on it alone. Hansu chuckled as he saw these guys. Follow the commands properly. You need to at least work for your meals. Dot. Hansu then charged forward ruthlessly, swung the scythe around and then slammed it down onto the head of the giant gatekeeper. Boom. Kwaang. The gatekeeper, which had its head smacked, roared loudly as it glared at Han Su while the fairy muttered quietly. I. What is this? They're fighting. Killjoy. 
Everyone realized the answer from the from the unsatisfied voice of the fairy. God damn it. Run. Receive as many buffs as possible. People who have Aaron's arrow shoot it from over here. And then everyone, as well as the special forces, started running towards Hansa's back. As I thought. This guy was created with the gatekeeper of the seventh floor of the abyss as the basis it was a version which was so weak that it couldn't be compared to the original but the physical structure of it and the skills it used seemed the same. Then I can read it. Kadududud Kwaaya. The gatekeeper shook his body crazily in order to break apart the chains which were entwining its body. Of course it was impossible for Han Su to suppress the strength of the giant wolf by himself. Since their size and mass were different from the start. It was a different issue from strength. But Han Su was flying between the body and the joints of the gatekeeper as he tied the chain around it. So that when it tried to swing its body, its whole body would be squeezed. So that when it tried to run forward, its front and back legs would get tangled up. Kududadut the judgment of Decrados was constantly draining the mana of the gatekeeper as it activated its. It's barely holding on. The gatekeeper wasn't average as he expected, the chain straightened as if they were about to snap. Hansu limited its movements by loosening and entwining the chains. He wanted to tie it up into a ball but then it might really snap. Hansu loosened and tightened the chains at different times as he tied it up as much as he could without snapping the chains. Its movements weren't suppressed completely because the chains didn't tie it up completely but its movements were still dulled. Dodge the front leg. The special forces, who were scattering the bones apart below, scattered in all directions while shouting. Boom. Cherik as Hansu loosened up the chains, the beast, which was twisting its body in annoyance, swung the now dot free front leg. But this was all as Hansu planned. He had loosened up the area which was the easiest to dodge on purpose. Kirik. Kiririk. Hansu was changing the direction of the beast even in such a situation by loosening and tightening the chains. Kuawan. The gatekeeper got even angrier because it felt like it became a marionette but Hansu didn't care as he continued to twist around its movements as he pulled on the chains. Well. I can't move it how I want but. It took all of his power to control the chains. Since a gatekeeper of this level was no joke. But such a thing like swinging a sword could be done by others. Kududak. Kuduk. Hurry and smash its ankles first. Since the bones come back to connect with each other, shove some things into the location where you smashed apart. As Hansu heard the endless voices from the clansmen of Tejin, he nodded his head. They're doing pretty good. The demons use a variety of skills. And because the special forces had gained a vast amount of experience, they didn't get flustered at the magical sight of the bones combining back and were neutralizing the ankles first. Gurn at that moment, a weird shockwave could be felt from the gatekeeper's mouth. And at the same time, the blue eyes in its eyes started to burn up. That's a little bit difficult if that thing were to burst out then at least half of them would become a mess. A power that was granted to the doorkeepers in order to incinerate the intruders. Sherurk Hansu grabbed onto the handle of the scythe while flying about on the chains. Kururururu the scythe in Hansu's hands started to drain his mana aggressively as it activated the skill. And Hansu swung it like so and smashed it onto the lower jaw of the gatekeeper. Boom. Quadaduk his neck bones were so thick that the attack, which he poured all his power into, just bounced off its cranium but still made it to face the front from its original position of being ready. But Hansu didn't expect this attack to send its head flying. His goal was the blue marble that could see seen between the bones he had smashed apart. Dot, ignition stone, the hellfire could only be let out once the mana from deep inside its body reached up the cranium and met the ignition stone with a violent reaction. An information was obtained after Keldian and Hansu realized that this thing was the gatekeeper on the road to obtaining the demonic jade crystal and had personally killed one and dissected it. Basically, as long as you ripped off the ignition stone then the hellfire wouldn't get completed. 
Han Su roughly shoved his hands between the regenerating bones and pulled out the bead. Qi Ik an extreme temperature which even made sounds of burning Han Su's flesh which was protected by his magic resistance. Han Su threw the ignition stone down and then continued to suppress it with the chains with his burnt hand. One of Tejin's clansmen, who was looking at him, asked through the message. The clan member was making a bitter expression as well. Since the thought of such a guy joining Gupti's clan and holding his blades at them was feeling extremely dangerous. But Han Su was using all his power to suppress the wolf and was having a hard time. A situation where there's a chance if they attacked. But Tejin shook his head. The clan member was rather confused at the changed attitude of Tejin but didn't talk back as he charged onto the giant gatekeeper again. And soon the giant wolf started to get disassembled one part at a time from the long range skills and the special forces who flew into it like a swarm of bees. It was pretty doable, right? Here. Take the runes. Hansu chuckled at the lords as he started to distribute the runes according to the amount of contribution from each lord. Tejin stared at this Hansu for a while and then spoke out. Why do you roam around alone? It doesn't seem like it'll be hard for you to make a clan without psychic powers. That much strength and a weird psychic power. And a weird aura that radiated from his whole body. It wasn't that you needed psychic powers like theirs in order to become a leader. If he's that strong then he could probably create a much larger clan than theirs. No, even if Han Su was to continue maintaining the semi basement union and had used his hands a few more times then they would probably be rolling around beneath him. Han Su chucked at those words. When will he raise them and when will he use them? He needed to run but if he were to take them with him then his back will bend. And if he wanted to maintain this amount of people at all times in the place he was going to be at from now on, he'd be simply too busy just to fill the holes. Since they'll die off in hundreds. Everyone has their personal issues. You probably have them too. Dot. Tejin stared at Han Su for a while and then looked at Gukti in the distance. This bastard. Set up a trap. He wasn't somebody who would stay beneath that Gukti. Tejin threw out a word after looking at Han Su for a while. Be careful of that Gukti. He couldn't tell more than that. Since if he were to say that Gukti was aiming for him and created a dispute, everyone would be in danger. Since even if Han Su wanted to do something to Gukti, the other clan lords wouldn't just stand idle. The lords hated Han Su and at the same time, felt pressured by him. They weren't clashing into each other because they agreed of his usefulness, but once he starts acting on Gukti, they will react extremely sensitively. But my mind would only be at ease if I at least tell him about this. Hansu smirked at those words and Tejin glared at Gukti while returning to his clansmen. Gukti clicked his tongue while looking at that Tejin. TSK. So this is how it rolls out. He had been found out but it didn't matter. Since when was the relationship between them good? And even if he knew, he couldn't do anything about it. How would a guy who valued his clansmen so much fight recklessly? You need to know when to throw things. Han Su was the same. But one thing was clear. It's better to leave him alone for a while. He needed time to practice and it was better to not touch him if he could hunt the gatekeepers like that. Since they could save crystals then. Gukti, who had judged that it was best to leave him alone temporarily, moved back in between his clansmen. Kududuk Gukti mumbled quietly as he saw the final gatekeeper being eliminated. That it's finally here. A giant castle could be seen over the carcass of the final gatekeeper. The witch was only seen in the distance. A ginormous crystal could be seen in the corner of the demon lord's castle. Let's see. About 1,000 people left. Gukti looked at his wrist. Eight miniature crystals. It wasn't a large amount because the 12 clan lords had to share but he could still obtain a pretty good artifact with it. 
a witch could be used once a day to allow the user to summon 12 protectors he shows as well as raising the speed of regeneration and movement near the user and the witch surrounds the body of the person whom the user touches with thorns could increase the battle powers of the clan by a lot. But Gupti shook his head. 12 is too many as I expected. And he is dangerous too. It's time for things to end soon. It was really the final gateway and the final chance. Since we're injured we're resting here first before moving out. We're going into the demon lord's castle after healing as much as possible. Gukti started to send a message toward somewhere as he heard the shouts of the clan lords. Kabata-chan's note the reincarnators, regular, chapters are scheduled for the Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and or Saturday. Otherwise, sponsored chapters, if there are, today, I just got to see that we're not that far in work progress so I only upload one today L, but then I guess there's still the good advantage of having a much much better translation and grammar quality lately slightly smiling face thank you. Chapter 38 Demon Lord's Castle, 5, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Taijin made a strange expression as he looked at Hansu who had appeared in front of him while he was looking at the Demon Lord's Castle in the distance. That's a dagger that I haven't seen around. Hansu laughed as he answered. Oh I bought the newest product. A dagger and scythe. A shiny dagger, which wasn't seen until now, was attached on Hansu's waist. A sword with a 30 centimeters long blade, which had a rather peculiarly long shape for a dagger. Of course he had many daggers dangling on his thighs but that weapon felt different at a glance. Set artifact. He had seen it on the catalog. An artifact that showed off its best effect when used in conjunction with Judgment of Dectrados. He thought that he was a guy who only used complex weapons just like the chain scythe. Though there was nothing to say since he used them well. And he also had many weird things. What is that pouch? While the people were cooking the strange plants which appeared on the road, food continued to come out from his pouch. But they weren't really jealous because the food which came out from it was on par with the plants they cooked. Can we really not be together above? Tejin asked with a regrettable tone as he looked at the giant crystal which had gotten rather close to them. Hansu chuckled at those words. I said follow if you want to follow. I won't take you with me but I won't stop you either. Tejin shook his head at those words. He wanted to follow him but he was not alone. They had gotten a little closer while fighting and because of this he had the opportunity to talk with him. And he could find out after talking to him for a while. There weren't many reasons why this guy was trying so hard to become strong. Just one. In order to go into more dangerous locations. His clansmen were strong too but if they were to follow him then they would die off in stroves. He didn't want to become strong that bad. The reason why he wanted to become strong was for the protection of the clan but that thing had different means and aim. It's a good choice. Hansu smiled as he looked at Tejin. Since the road which he will be traveling from now on will be even more dangerous. The things he needed to do in the tutorial were two. Clearing the final dungeon. And one more. A dark lord who is bound to be somewhere. Dark lord. One of the guys he needed to pull out by the roots for the safety of humanity. Guys who were dangerous to no extent. No, the reason why they were so infamous was because they had the potential to be so dangerous from the start. There was one in this tutorial area too. I will clash with him properly. In the tower. No matter where you are, you meet in the tower. Since clashes were inevitable according to its structure. Hansu muttered inwardly as he slowly walked inside the demon lord's castle. The inner parts of the demon lord's castle was empty. And a red-colored crystal existed within the deep parts of the demon lord's castle. It is not. Working yet. The aura of the crystal was too lacking to say it was working. And in front of that crystal, in the large field which was enough to accommodate for the surviving thousand people, a statue which looked intimidating at a glance stood. Is that the demon lord? While the clan lords were frowning, Gukti approached from afar. 
Tejin frowned as he looked at him. Detestable bastard. But even so, he could only agree with his usefulness. Since his clan showed off the greatest might out of the ones here. Gukti approached the clan lords as he spoke. I have a suggestion. We have finally arrived at the final gateway together. It seems like the crystal would work if we break that statue apart. Gukti looked at the giant statue in the distance and then spoke to the clan lords. Honestly speaking all of us have seven to eight mini crystals right. This isn't a large number but it is more than enough to preserve our powers. Everyone nodded at those words. The amount of mini crystals differed from each other's contributions but it was a number which could at least take 40 of them up with them. If it was this much, it wasn't lacking to start anew in a new place. In a place where they could be in a very advantageous situation just by gathering up 10 people, there was nothing to even say about 40 of them. Since it was a very pressuring number to go against if they weren't clan lords like them. But Gukti threw out a very straightforward talk as he looked at them. Let's speak really honestly. In my situation I want to kill off everyone else. It's probably the same for other friends too. Isn't that too honest? Let's put all in the open and speak. Everyone thought inwardly at those words. Even if they weren't that frank, rejoicing at the reduction of power of other clans was an obvious fact. Who would like a strong competitor in a world where the fairies were setting up tricks in order to get them to compete with each other? They might even have to kill each other as soon as they go up. And the other eleven clans were dangerous competitors and by the time they regret about fighting, it'll be too late. Everyone wanted it even if they weren't saying it as straightforward as he was. For the power of others to get reduced in the final battle. As Gukti saw the expression of a consensus from them, he added in some more words as extra. But I don't think we should do that. The reason why we have gotten here together despite hating each other so much was because we were on the same boat. We need each other that much. We need to combine our strengths in order to break through the gateway to ascend. What do you want to say? Gukti laughed at Tajin's words as he spoke. Very simple. Let us all reduce the risk and raise the chances of winning. Dot. I know that all of you have not exchanged all of your crystals into artifacts in case of emergencies. The same goes for me. Dot. But think about it. How lame is this? If we just change our crystals into artifacts then the power of our clan unions rises by a huge amount. On the other hand, the crystals are an existence which just cut down our battle power even if we have it. Because you won't be able to fight properly as you never know when the guy next to you will attack your back and run away. If this were to happen then we could all die. A massacre. Hmm, Tejin thought inwardly. Gukti was a guy he didn't like but there was nothing wrong about what he had said. Honestly speaking, they had to convert all the crystals in their possession in order to face the giant statue, the demon lord, in front of them. Then the number of survivors would increase. But the reason why they held on to the crystals was because they felt uneasy. Since this crystal was a sure escape path. Gukti looked at them and shouted as he suggested. So I have a suggestion. Let's all change the crystals we have into artifacts. Whichever artifact you change it to is however the user wants but let's use it all without a single one remaining. Coom. Hum. This is a means to get rid of the escape path. Since we don't know what kind of crazily orders the clan lord will give after escaping if there's one left. Since there's probably somebody who thinks that it'll be a prophet massacring the 1,000 people here and surviving by himself. Dot. Oh. By the way, I'm part of those guys. Can you trust in my clan like this and fight? It wasn't an impossible feat they didn't know how strong that statue was but if 1,000 of them had to fight with all their might, 100 people acting crazily would be extremely fatal. They could bury everyone here except the five who would escape with the mini crystal. Too honest, thank you for the compliment. On the other hand, if there wasn't a single crystal left in my hands then I couldn't do such a thing. Because that just means let's just all die. I don't want to die that way. 
If we all set our boundaries and have our clans fight in those areas with all their might then there will be no instances of being backstabbed. You just need to do your best on your defenses. Can't somebody hide the crystals? Gukti shook his head. We can't hide the crystals because we know the number of each other's crystals too well. Once we all agree let's buy and show each other. If we compare the number of crystals distributed and the cost of the items on the catalog, you won't be able to hide the crystals even if you wanted to. Hmm, everyone started to ponder at these words. It's not like there were an uncountable amount of demons and because they had hunted them down employing their special forces together, the number of crystals were clear. A situation where they knew the number of crystals on each other very well because it was impossible to sneakily move around the special forces to hunt. According to those words then it was possible to know the total amount of crystals without a single one being left out. Honestly speaking, it was an obvious thing to decrease factors for anxiety and reinforce their battle strength as much as possible. Gukti added more words as he looked at these people. Think about it. Would the fairy have set the difficulty so that it wasn't possible to win? No matter how much fairy likes for us to die then they wouldn't have put in so much effort like this when they were going to kill us all. They could just simply kill us off and that'll be that, but mmm, it means that that thing is possible if we all combine our strengths. Then it means a lot more can survive than you guys escaping with the mini crystals. If you all agree then I'll change first. Everyone pondered at those words but then nodded. And they all started to buy artifacts one by one and showed each other. I'm choosing the Thornwood Casket. I'm getting the Ariadnea's Essence. Gukti made a content expression as he checked them one by one. Good. I'm choosing the Wilderness Lord's Cape. This costs eight crystals. Everyone should know I received eight. Hansu you had exactly fifty-nine, where did you use them all? Fifty-nine of them. Everyone thought silently. If you include the judgment of Decrados he bought before then it totals to 119 crystals. They had known this but confirming it again made them amazed. Hansu chuckled as he lifted and showed the dagger hanging onto his waist. I used it here. Justice of Decrados. Gukti gazed at Hansu dagger and then nodded with a content expression. Though four are left over. Is there anything else you're going to buy? Hansu pondered for a moment and then shook his head. Gukti chucked at that Hansu. You probably don't have a reason to go up. Keep it well then. Well. You're probably here because you have an objective left. Gukti laughed inwardly. If he was somebody who would go up for his own safety then he would have left already. The fact that he had stayed until now meant that he had something to do left. Anyways, if he decided to not fight and create a chaos or go up then nobody could stop him. It was better to just tell him to hold on to the escape path and fight actively. Well. There's not a single crystal left between the clan lords. We can finally focus on the enemy in front of us. As soon as Gukti's words ended, the giant statue squeaked as it raised its body. No, it was not a statue. It was like a living thing having been petrified like a statue. It's been a while huh? Demon Lord, Barbatoi. Though it was a weaker version, old memories sprung up when he saw the thing he had fought back then to death with after a long time. Though it wasn't a good memory. Just the number of humans who had died by getting ripped apart by his hands was easily over 10,000. While Han Su mumbled inwardly, Tejin shouted loudly at the Demon Lord. Normal clansmen fall back in special forces, long range and those with healing skills. A decision that had been laid because it could be a massacre if the normal clansmen, who couldn't even fight against the gatekeepers, got swept up in the fight against the demon lord. If they couldn't even fight against then they were not of help. But Tejin, who had been shouting, realized that this wasn't necessary. Since an enormous amount of undeads started to rise out of the ground in a crazy pace. God damn it. Don't fall back and cover us instead. It looked like that they couldn't even get close to the demon lord without normal clansmen. And soon the undead charged ferociously and chaos was created. 
And at that moment the fairy appeared above their heads. Wow! For one thousand people to have survived. Amazing! You just need to finish it off. First of all, the arrival point, even if you chose the same island, would be different from the mini dot crystal to that of the giant crystal so you don't need to worry about getting revenged. Hee <laughs> hee. Dot. It sounded like that they should attack from behind and leave without feeling any pressure since they didn't need to worry about being chased after running away with the mini crystal. But everyone snorted. Since they didn't have any mini crystals anymore. But the fairy's words did not end. By the way, it isn't that the giant crystal turns on when you kill the demon lord. Dot. It will turn on after 30 minutes. So you just need to survive until then right. The fairy disappeared with those words and everyone flinched. It was survival and not kill. Which meant the clan which fought the hardest would have the greatest loss. It's perfect. Really. And Gukti laughed as he looked at everyone flinching in the battlefield. Proofreaders note sometimes I just think that if Hansu sacrificed just one of his slots for a not dot so dot good skill at the start, then everything else would be much easier. Kabato-chan's note the reincarnators' regular chapters are scheduled for the Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and or Saturday. Otherwise, sponsored chapters, if there are, m dot the grammar quality has improved but then the translation is sometimes a little bit off. So I whip it dud more. One dollar equals one whip. Chapter 39 Demon Lord's Castle, 6, you are listening at novel full dot audio. Kududuk aim at the neck. Damn it. We're getting pushed on this side. The clansmen started to clash against the undead under the command of the clan lords. The sounds of crashing and ripping resonated from all directions. And within the small gap that the clansmen had created, Hansu and the special forces started to charge ruthlessly. Towards the giant statue, no, towards the demon lord which was stretching. And then Hansu, the special forces and the demon lord clashed aggressively. Kwa. Maybe because it's a weaker version it cannot talk huh? Hansu muttered inwardly as he looked at the 15m tall human shaped demon lord. But that as I expected. Hansu clicked his tongue. The clan lords weren't attacking properly. They didn't have to kill the demon lord. They just needed to endure. 30 minutes. A time which could be held out if you focused on defending and dragged out the time. There were 12 clans and anyone who survived were part of the forces they could take above. It was obvious that everyone wanted to save as many as possible. And because of this the clan lords, despite having the special forces out in the front, were just keeping their distance. The demon lord threw a fist along with a rough scream while everybody was not fighting properly. Whom the giant body combined with the unbelievable speed generated a tremendous amount of wind as it created a humongous shockwave. Boom. God damn it. Quack. Ironically, the demon lord, the king of the evil clan, wasn't using any skills. The only thing it had was its overwhelming stamina, health, speed and regeneration. But this was dangerous enough to the point that every attack from the demon lord crushed the people ruthlessly but this just suppressed the clan lords from taking action even more. If he had used an area of effect attack then they might have attacked him because of fear but seeing that he was killing them off one by one, it seemed like they could keep quite a lot alive and then run away through the crystal. And even better if the special forces of the other clans die off. God damn it. Stick properly. Why are you backing off? Tejin gritted his teeth at how the others were acting. The only special forces that were fighting properly were Tejins and Yerims. These two didn't want to fight at the very front either. They had just stayed here because it seemed like everything would collapse in an instant if these two were to back off as well. But the one who was fighting the most actively at this moment was Han Su. Since the others were others and he had to kill this thing. He didn't have the leisure to care about other things anyway. Because only then would the demonic jade crystal come out. Hansu was currently fighting close to the demon lord. 
It's been a while since we fought. Barbatoi. It wasn't Hansu of back then. And it wasn't the demon lord of back then too but fighting it whose attacks and habits were clearly inscribed in his head made it less of a burden for Hansu to fight. Barbatoi was a pure physical type. If he had gone up against someone with a peculiar skill then it would have been very pressuring even for Hansu. Of course the basic skill which it had, made it so normal clansmen wouldn't be able to come close. And that's why the special forces need to do well. Hansu flew around the demon lord as he started to tie it up with great vigor. Kwang. When the demon lord applied some strength, the chain made a crackling sound as if it was about break. That won't do Hansu pulled out the new artifact he got. Shararuk as Hansu sent in some mana, the single dagger in his hands instantly turns into twelve. One of the two skills of the justice of Decrados. The dagger could divide into twelve that had the same durability but once one of them is broken, then the broken copy wouldn't be regenerated even if you were to use division again. Hansu dodged the attacks of the demon lord as he stabbed the dagger into the body of the demon lord who was tied up with the chain of judgment of Decrados. Puk Pupupuk the dagger went through the chain and got embedded. As it was made as a set item, the holes on each link of the chain were just the right size for the dagger to go through. The effect, which was activated when he used these two artifacts together, started up. And in this unique form, the chain became even stronger and the dagger sharper. Hansu, who had swiftly embedded all twelve daggers, aggressively pulled on the chain. Kudududuk as he pulled the chains, the daggers which were embedded along with the chains followed as they sliced apart the demon lord's flesh. Like an electric chainsaw, as the chain which was tied around the demon lord were pulled, the daggers started to tear apart the flesh of the demon lord. Kwa. It might break. As the enraged demon lord shook its body, the chain tensed up as if it was about to break. It was a situation where it couldn't untie the chain because the daggers were embedded deep into its body. But even if the set effect was activated, there was still a limit. But it doesn't matter. Shararuk as Hansu sent in mana waves, the twelve daggers combined into one and came into Hansu's hand. And it was a simple but very efficient function for the dagger. As long as there's these two functions then there was no lack of firepower. As the daggers were removed and the chain was loosened, the demon lord started to become even more crazy. Wayak. God damn it. TSK. The special forces need to fight properly. Though he had turned it into a mess, it was regenerating at an extreme speed. Its true might came from that abnormal rate of recovery, ability to take hits, resistance and things like strength, agility and savagery were just the surface of it. The special forces needed to shove their skills into it and destroy it faster than the speed of its regeneration while he tied it up. There was a limit to how much one person alone could damage the demon lord. But though the special forces were attacking it, they were doing so in a very passive way and were using safe tactics so the damage couldn't catch up to the regeneration speed of the demon lord. If this continues then more will die before 30 minutes are up. And the lords were all getting further away from the battlefield as if they had judged that the battlefield was dangerous. Hansu shook his head as he saw these signs. Bastards. What are you going to command from back there? Tejin gritted his teeth. It was better for the lords to be in a safer spot. Since it'll be over for everyone if they die. But if you wanted to raise the strength of the clan then it was better to command from the center of the clansmen. It was good to leave things to work automatically but it was also important to look over the situation of the battle to increase the strength of the clan by preserving their numbers and even making them fight forcibly at times. But the only ones who were fighting in the center of their clans were only Yeren and Tejin. The ten other clan lords, including Gukti, had already backed off into the distance. The other lords smirked at Tejin shouting in the distance. Why are you fighting in the front like that if you aren't of much help anyway? This bastard. If you take the people who protect us then who is going to fight the undead? One of the lords laughed at these words. We only brought around two per person. Don't be so sensitive. 
and we already sent the special forces to the front. Dot. While Tejin was gritting his teeth, Gupti shouted while looking at him. You guys should come here too since it's dangerous. Rather, it might become a nuisance because they have to protect you. I will humbly decline. Tejin, who had finished his words, controlled his clan as he charged towards the demon lord. And Gukti made a regretful expression as he looked at such Tejin and Yeren. 9. Though it's a little regretful, this is enough. What? While the lords were making weird expressions from Gukti's words, the cape that was surrounding Gukti started to shine brightly. Fuck. What are you doing? Gulte giggled at these words. What do you mean what am I doing? I'm calling some protectors. Once a day, the user can summon twelve designated protectors to himself. And the thing that had come out of the light were the Gukti's twelve special forces. Gukti spoke to the special forces. Get them. As soon as the words ended, the two protectors combined with the twelve special forces as they charged at the protectors of other lords. Quaduduk Kuduk Kwok. God damn it. The eighteen protectors fought back but the power of the special forces were a step higher. And Gukti's special forces were even a step higher than that. Damn it. While the clan lords were calling their forces in a hurry, Gukti's other clansmen started to jump about crazily and started to get a grip on the people's ankles. Despite the difference in numbers, because they had defended with their lives on the line, the speed of the other clansmen had slowed down and by the time the other clansmen killed off all of Gupti's clansmen and got near, the clan lords had long become hostages of Gupti. Gupti giggled as he looked at the ten special forces around him who had become a mess. Two had died and the ten who were alive had become a huge mess, it was still easy for them to cut off the necks of the clan lords who they were holding hostage. One needs to just protect me. It's very clean. One of the clan lords gritting their teeth as he looked at Gukti. You crazy bastard. If this happens then you die too. Isn't your ability valuable to you? Why wouldn't they have thought of such a situation? The only reason why they weren't expecting internal fights between clan lords was because if one of the clan lords were to create a mess then they would all die here. What would you do if you take them as hostages? If you act crazily and create a chaos here, you will get pushed back by the undead and the remaining people will all die at the hands of the undead and the demon lord. It had already been a while since the fight had been tilted towards the advantage of the undeads in the fight in the distance. They had fallen quickly while the remaining clans were clashing. Hansu and the remaining two special forces were stopping the demon lord but how would they hold out twenty minutes at this rate? They don't even have many crystals. Gukti giggled as he laughed. It doesn't matter if I die. No, it wasn't that it didn't matter if he died or not. His job was to get everybody here and die together. Why would he have gotten rid of all the mini crystals? What? Was he such a maniac out of maniacs? And at that moment, one of the lords, who had a blade up against them, made a pale expression as they thought of something. You bitch. You aren't a lord. Some crazy bastard sent one of the clansmen instead of themselves. You crazy bastard. Do you mean that it's okay for you to die? Gukti's expression chilled at those words. Such a way of speaking when they had their fate in the hands of others despite having such formidable power of a lord. There's too much of a difference. He thought back of the scene when his lord had sent him here. The symbol could be given from a clansman and not a lord as long as the lord gave permission and clansmen could communicate between each other through messages. The command was very simple too. Since there was the first command every newcomer of the clan received. If you do this then you can pretend to be the lord perfectly. As Gukti, who had finished thinking, gave a signal with his eyes, the grip of the special force member holding the lord's neck tightened. Squeeze, kook, kook. What do you mean crazy bastard? He's a much more formidable person than scrubs like you. And at the same time everyone's expression paled as Gukti laughed coldly at them. 
Han Su made a cold expression as he looked at the chaos occurring behind him, Fraud Lord. A tactic which used one of their clansmen to pose as the Lord, make them careless and then die together. Not everyone could do such a thing. First, if you want to become a Fraud Lord then you need to be able to sustain the same amount of clansmen as the other clans. Since it'll be weird if a clan lord who could command 100 did not sustain 100 people. Which meant that you needed to be able to control 100 people to reinforce the fraud lord and another 100 for himself adding up to 200 people in total. And you also needed the commanding power to command suicide as well. Once the clansmen go under the lord, they create a connection between themselves and there are no occurrences where the lord cannot order a clansman because of such connections. Since clansmen and lords were in a system of up and down. But such a command like suicide is hard to make because usually when you give such an extreme command, the symbol will break most of the time. Of course there are exceptions there as well. A situation where you raise the trait of the lord with exceptional aptitude and had your trait become much superior to the point where the strength of your trait becomes much stronger than their soul. Once this happens then it was possible to command things almost forcibly. And there was a person who was capable of this in the past tutorial as well. A guy who showed extreme aptitude beyond the specialties of lords. Though the regrettable part was the fact that he was crazy. Dark mad lord. You've done something huh? A typical example that showed that, although a crazy guy is dangerous, a crazy guy with good abilities is even more dangerous. And at the same time, one of the guys who will become the biggest obstacle in this preparation for the final dungeon. One of the representatives of the Hansu looked at Gukti, who had caused a chaos in the distance, with a cold expression. Kabata-chan's note the reincarnators, regular, chapters are scheduled for the Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and or Saturday. Otherwise, sponsored chapters, if there are, nothing to say otherwise. Just got a whip at dud more cause there was a lot to edit this time. Chapter 40 Demon Lord's Castle, 7, you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Though the trait of Lord seemed overpowered, there were still a few limitations. You could only give limited orders to a strong clansman whom you had given the symbol to. Since if the order is too extreme then their self.defense mechanisms will activate and break the symbol. And there was also a limit to numbers. Due to a few more limitations other than these, even a lord couldn't show invincible dot-like abilities in an area of people around the same skill level as him. But like every other skill or psychic power, the traits level was the most important thing and few lords with amazing potential appear from time to time. People who bloom the trait much faster and use this as a base to start with a huge head start compared to others was one of them as well. While the others could barely control 100 people, he had a powerful control over 200 people to the point where he could order them to commit suicide and had stood out starting from the tutorial. Though he was a crazy bastard. And even more regrettable was that this guy was part of his own tutorial group. Out of the 9,000 people who had gotten to the second tutorial area, only 300 people, excluding the 200 of his clansmen, survived due to this guy since he had killed them all. And with a very simple philosophy as the basis. A result that came out from a personality that could not trust others, amazing potential and ruthlessness. He had thought that the real enemy in the tutorial area was not the monsters but rather humans who had the possibility of causing riots, he used this as the basis and had thought to kill off every potential rival. Usually people prepared and grouped up in large mobs after calculating the fact that they had to fight against the people who had gone missing before them but this guy was not like that. Make them not able to compete against the people ahead because they can't combine their forces. Would they have made it so they would survive if they grouped up in a crowd of 3000 but kill them if they roamed around alone. After setting up the tutorial like this. If there was some sort of consistency in the fairy's actions then such things won't happen. There will probably be an area where the people who had arrived earlier wouldn't be able to lay hands on them right away or prevent them from doing so for a while. An area which would make it possible for the newcomers to be able to rival the people ahead. 
and he was a successful man, he had followed the above reasonings and had succeeded in eliminating his rivals with his own power. And his calculations weren't wrong, he had gained an infamous title by the time he had arrived at the purple area just within five years of coming out of the tutorial area. An infamous title which he had received after hunting down lords fervently due to his personality, which hated lords to the point where it was weird, despite him being one, along with his notions of destroying possible future rivals. Thanks to this guy, most of the lords in the same group as him had died. He had even killed normal adventurers whenever he saw them with the reason of them having the potential to become dangerous as well. Keldian's words came to his mind. TSK. It'd have been better if we were to fight now though. But it'll be a huge loss if he didn't get the thing he was going for while following that guy around. He might have skinned him off slowly, like peeling an apple, and destroyed him if it wasn't for the structure of the islands but this was not possible since there were set islands which he had to go to. He had to differentiate clearly between the main mission and sub.missions. And his path wasn't clear anyway since there were almost no survivors. Since everyone who had met with his clan had died. So he had focused on the dungeon first. But there was one place where his objectives of the final dungeon and that guy's path would cross for sure. A place where the biggest amount of lords had gathered. And a place where you could massacre a large amount of lords if you use a fraud lord. If he had some form of logic then he would have taken the lords as hostage and would have used their forces but this guy would kill them all since he hated them to no end. Hansu had never stopped being on guard against the tower even when he was hunting. He had set them up so they grouped and guarded against each other and had always hunted near the dungeon so he could rush back because he didn't know which one of the twelve was the fraud lord. Since the hardness of crystal was not something somebody normal could smash, it was only because it was him that he was able to smash it apart. I had thought that he didn't exist because he didn't come out. It seemed like he had been looking for the final chance like Keldian had said. And because of this Hansu had never created a dangerous situation. Since it wasn't possible for him to act when there was no danger. But it's a little too much to do that while fighting Demon Lord. He wasn't sure because the decision of using up all their mini dot crystals was a very reasonable method but Gukti was the fraud lord. Let's see. How do I deal with this? He couldn't stay away from the demon lord for a long time. If this guy gets released then all the special forces would get shredded. And if he were to dash up there then they just needed to do one thing. They would make the other clansmen attack him by threatening the lords held hostage. It would be troublesome if that happens. First. I will open a path for you to live. Hansu smiled as he shouted loudly while continuing to fight the demon lord. Whoa. Don't get too excited. Calm down for a second. Dot. Gukti, who was about to order the special forces to cut off the lord's heads, flinched at these words. What else could he do in such a situation? Gukti had unconsciously gotten curious because Han Su was such a unique guy. And the next answer was something which exceeded his calculations. Let's trade. You wouldn't want to die either. Gukti flinched at these words. Who in the world wanted to die? He was acting like this because he couldn't go against his lord's orders. Han Su spoke as he looked at him. There are crystals on me. I will give them to you. Dot. Is he crazy? What kind of nonsense was this? Han Su spoke again. I don't know who your lord is but wouldn't it be better to take those lords and use them instead of killing them all? Everyone nodded at these words. If they take the lords as hostage then all their forces become part of Gukti's lord. Since there wasn't anyone who wouldn't comply if there was a blade up against their necks. Han Su spoke as he looked at him. The terms are very simple. First, you take the lords up with the crystals. Then you threaten the lords up there and order the special forces to kill the demon lord with me. Simple right. Then every force here can go through the crystal and survive. Dot. Then your lord is basically gaining nine lords worth of forces. And I get to hunt the demon lord. The remaining people could survive. 
It's a win. Win. Even you can live. It was tiring anyway because the others were pulling their forces back. Dot. Gukti clicked his tongue inwardly. His words were wrong. Since his lord had hated lords to the point where it was weird. If these guys go up then they would all die. But the temptation of crystals were too strong. And something else which was even more alluring. If I go up, hunt the demon lords with the clansmen of these guys and kill him by attacking his back at the last moment. Would they be able to resist if he orders them with blades against their throats? Take the forces of the nine lords up, use them for a while, kill them off, collect their artifacts and runes and give them to Wang Young and kill the lords too. It's perfect. But the one who had moved first was Tae Jin who had been fighting with him. Han Su Man. How can you trust him? Guk Ti shrugged at Tae Jin's words. It seemed like they have seen through his thoughts already so it was time for him to push strongly. Don't trust me then. If you don't want to then we'll just kill the nine according to the plans and I can also just die like that. And the remaining one thousand here would all die. Maybe it's not even one thousand anymore. I'm not sure if you guys can hold out, it seems like there's still twenty minutes left. This son of a bitch. Damn retards. Getting caught as hostages. Their actions weren't to Tajin's liking from the start but he didn't fail to disappoint until the end. Hansu chuckled at Gukti. I'll take it that you agree then. Take them. Gukti, who had received the crystals which Hansu had thrown carefully using the special forces, hurriedly used the crystals and the ten special forces, nine lords and Gukti started to get covered in light. Goodness. For it to play out so easily. Gukti cheered inwardly as he selected the destination point. Destination is. Island of the Tower. The light which came out from the mini dot crystals soon covered the twenty of them and soon afterwards they cowdled be seen within the demon castle anymore. Damn it. I don't care anymore then. Don't worry too much. He looked pretty naive. He will keep his promise. Han Su, who had shrugged his shoulders, looked up at the island of the tower and then shook his head. It's done. It seemed like he wanted to live. He would have realized that some things were fishy if he had thought about it for a moment. But he had cleared it. It seems like I can focus a little bit now. If he is that guy's subordinate then. He would go to the island of the tower. And it didn't matter because he had already worked on that separately. Hansu finished his thoughts and turned around. Then he started to slash apart the demon lord seriously. Who the disappeared lords, special forces and Gukti had appeared within a dark space while bathing in light. A location where they moved to if the mini dot crystals were activated. Perfect. Two lords had survived but it wouldn't be easy for them to survive either. Since he would give the orders now. It seems like you would need to comply for now. Hurry and give the order. First attack the demon lord and once you kill it, attack Hansu. The special forces pushed the blades against the lords' necks. Tisk, the lords nodded despite clicking their tongue. They couldn't do anything else because they were held hostage but it seemed like he wouldn't kill them. They could always look out for chances as long as they were alive. Dumbass. And this was why his lord was trying to get rid of them whenever he had the chance. He could already hear their eyeballs rolling about. Asterisk TL. Korean saying for planning things out, while Gukti was smiling, a man's voice was heard behind them, who were on the ground. Ha! Huh. Look at these guys. When they turned around quickly, a person with a weird mask was approaching them. Who are you? The man smiled as he was about to speak out his name but then stopped. Then there would be no point of putting the mask on. He had disguised himself in order to not show the relationship between him and Han Su. But they really did come. He had told me that they would come if I waited here. The man spoke out after mumbling inwardly for a while. It's not like the psychic power is being marvelous only once or twice. He just needed to do what he needed to do. Mm, no need for names. 
we won't be seeing each other for long anyway. I just need to cut off their necks and take the things that come out right. Kududuk. This crazy bastard. Sang Jin, who had cut off a lord's neck with one swing of his sword, laughed coldly at Gukti who was screaming. Kabadachan's note the reincarnators, regular, chapters are scheduled for the Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and or Saturday. Otherwise, sponsored chapters, if there are, had less to edit so I whippic dud less.